read no we don't know okay so, ma'am okay. it's chapter 6 so shall we start okay okay well so with all your due permission i'm starting with the session good evening everyone i am batul from clonet i would like to take a minute to introduce our platform clonet to everyone present here with us today clonet is india's one of the largest digital life cme platform where doctors generate their medical content i would like to welcome all the esteemed speaker doctors the participant doctors and the panelists in today's live digital webinar that is organized by madurai menopause society team clonet is happy and proud to be the digital partner for this webinar Please have a glimpse on the video that is going to be played. In today's webinar a very important topic that needs a lot of emphasis in today's time is going to be discussed the topic is IMA presidential webinar on benign vulvar lesions the webinar in association with the madurai menopause society will outline vaginal estrogen vaginal rejuvenation and benign vulvar lesions based on clinical cases now without any further delay i would like to welcome the moderators for today's webinar dr revati janakiram ma'am she is the founder and president of madurai menopause society and dr jyotika desai ma'am she is a senior consultant at dr pr desai hospital bangalore chairperson website committee ims ma'am over to you thank you now it's my great pleasure to take this uh, presidential webinar and i always admire our vibrant president uh, dr shobhana for two things number one is weekly president webinar and weekly dance exercise these are all two uh, really an innovative idea i hand soft to you dr shobhana we enjoy that thank you so and much and i request our imams uh, president dr sindhu ramchandran to give welcome address she is uh, president at at present for madurai menopause society and she has held post a lot of posts in uh, madurai og society also and she is recipient of doctors day award lifetime achievement award im and all over to you dr sendru to welcome the gathering a warm good evening it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for this ims presidential webinar which is first of its kind initiated by our ims president dr shobhana mohandas the topic is benign vulvo vaginal lesion which is a common clinical occurrence we come across in our day to day practice but less often discussed i feel privileged to welcome our guest of honor dr ratna bali chakravarti director ivf and infertility clinic max medical and research center and dr seema sharma professor in hod department of obstetric and gynec jnu medical college jaipur welcome you respected madams i welcome our respected speakers for the day the vibrant ims president dr shobhana mohandas and dr vidya panchoria the great academicians welcome you dear madams i welcome the respected chairpersons dr anji soni secretary general indian menopause society and professor dr sumathi head of the department obstetrics and gynecology madurai medical college and garment rajaji hospital madurai welcome you dear madams i welcome our beloved founder president dr revathi janakira and dr jyotika desa chairperson website committee indian menopause society who have readily accepted to moderate the panel discussion i welcome all the young and energetic panelists i welcome all the attendees of this webinar welcome one and all the next one will be ganesh bandana lighting the lamp om saraswati namo namaha ma saraswati namo namaha vidya dayini namo namaha hansava
my request, Dr. Angay Tanni, Founder Secretary, Madurai Manapal Society, to take over and conduct the CME programs. Dr. Angay Tanni, she, is, she was the former professor. Madam Hasiri, please, Madam. Yeah, yeah. Former professor and HOD, Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, Madurai Medical College, Madurai. She did her MDOG in IOG, Chennai. Madras Medical College. She was in Tamil Nadu Medical Service from 1981 to 2014, past president Madhuri Oji Society, founder secretary, Indian Menopause Society, Madhuri Chapter. She has got several awards, CS John Prize Award at AICOG Varanasi 2012 for best MCH paper, cash prize for best post presentation for vulvar cancer at AICOG 2011 Hyderabad. She has got several certificates she has conducted several conferences and workshops. A field of interest, HIV, high-risk pregnancy, Gaina, Pong College in Manapas. Over to Yongle Tenni. I request you to introduce the guest of honor. Angir Kenny, are you there? Dr. Angir Kenny. Good evening, madam. Good evening, yeah. madam. Roja Vedasani. Dr. Angir Kenny, are you there? Angir Kenny? Okay, if she's not there. Dr. Ratnabali has joined, no? Batul? Batul? Yes, Dr. Yeah. Okay, then I'll introduce Dr. Ratnabali Chakravarti. He's the director of IVF and Infertility Clinic. Mox Medical and Research Center, former professor and of Department of OG MJ Medical College, Kishangar. And she was a past president of IMS 2018-19. She is a consultant OGCN in Manipal Hospital, Calcutta, ILS Hospital, as well as Bhagiradi Neotia Women and Children Care at uh, Calcutta. And to her credit, she has got a lot of awards, IOG Dr. Satya Paul Award and IMA National President Special Appreciation Award and the Economic Times Inspiring Gynecologist of India Award. And a lot of research work also she has undertaken in the GCP train and numerous research papers have been published by her and presented in national and international con conferences. She has delivered many, many lectures and orations in national and international conferences. She has been chairperson National Advocacy Committee Indian Menopause Society, past vice, vice chairperson in All India Women's Cell, IMA, past chairperson women's cell indian medical association bengal state chapter founder secretary of urjo ngo work up for uplifting women 40 plus madam dr ratnapali i request you to say a few words to bless us dr ratnapali ma'am please Is she there? Ma'am, it seems that she's not here. Is it? It seems that Dr. Ratnapati ma'am is not here. She hasn't joined in yet. Oh, that's why I asked. Huh? Okay, then we'll move on to the next. Uh... I will introduce Dr. Seema. Madam, may I introduce her? Pardon? May I introduce Seema? Ah, Seema. yeah. Angir, can you come? Yeah, sir. yeah. Please introduce Dr. Seema. It's a great pleasure to be introduced, Dr. Seema. I suppose Sima. I am introduced every time because with Shobna, madams, this uh, all I am coming every time. So I, I, you can skip my Morning. introduction. <laughs> Your audio is not started. clear. She is a professor and HOD department of OBG, JNU Medical College, mm -hmm. Jaipur. And she is a member of International Society for Ultrasound in OBG. And she is also a member in International Menopause Society, Vice President of Indian Menopause Society. And she is the director of Sangal Gainal Care Jaipur. And she has delivered more than 200 invited lectures in various local, national, international world congresses. And she has published many articles, as well as she is a reviewer and editorial board member of various journals, 
and she is a keen researcher and an ultrasound expert. And I request Dr. Shima to say a few words about our uh, CMA and SS. Yeah, madam, I was just uh, uh, telling that uh, my introduction is given every time. So there's no need, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing for me is I am being loved by you all and ca called by you all. And uh, uh, the topic this time Shobna Madam has taken vulval, benign vulval disorders is also very important to discuss. And this is the beauty, how intelligently Shobna Madam has uh, charted out the program and uh, she's taking up all the uh, topics which are crucial to be discussed one by one. So, uh, Vulval disorders are also a plethora of diseases which needs to be discussed. And sometimes these disorders are like that, that uh, we have to counsel the patient that uh, for a long time they might not be treated also. So uh, let us see what today's program, in today's program, all the speakers and panelists are going to reveal to us. So without taking any much time, uh, uh, I beg you all my thank you. Dr. Angekini? Yes, madam. Yeah. Has Anju joined? Anju, are you there? I didn't see her. Hmm. I told her in the morning also, I reminded her. Hmm. She might have forgotten. I don't see her in the participants list. Ah. So I think we'll skip her. Uh, yes, yes. I am uh, there. Ah, here ah. she's done. Great. Chalo, introduce <laughs> her. Ange, can you introduce ah, the persons? Welcome, ah. Dr. Ranji Tony. She's now at present Secretary General of Indian Menopause Society. And she's the chairperson of HIV and AIDS Committee, FOXI. And she was a past president Jobs and Jaipur Menopause Society. She's Secretary IMS Jaipur chapter. Yeah. Thank you for your kind words. Okay, thank you for the kind words. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. at the opposite. Thank you, yeah. madam. Yeah. You, I yeah. request to take over the session, madam. And introduce yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Can, can you show me Dr. Yeah. Chomna's CV, please? Eric, come on, Anju. We talk to each yes, other yes, every yes, morning. Yes, yes. Roj, <laughs> subhye, <laughs> we are secretary, president. We are like, we don't read really introducing each other. Yeah, come on. Yeah, that. okay. No, so, no, no, it is Chomna necessary, Dr. Chomna. Our audience are different. No. no. Audience oh. purpose. Maybe. Everybody knows me. Yeah, that is enough. <laughs> I don't have such a long CV. That's why I do not want you to introduce me. Okay. Yeah, anyway, but anyway. she is a, she is a dynamic present. And uh, of course, we all know her. And her uh, academic skills also, we all know. So, and she started this beautiful program of uh, present webinars, we all know. And where she is covering up each and every topic in such details that I think by the time her tenure is over, we will be able to know each and everything about uh, menopause and what best that, you know, all these webinars are being put on website. So anybody who has missed these webinars can go ahead and see the sessions live, you know, kind of live and find out. And if any query, of course, can uh, talk to Dr. Shobna. So welcome, Dr. Shobna. Your yeah. topic, your chosen mm -hmm. is a very, very important topic, I feel. Because uh, all the women who uh, are suffering this problem hardly come to the physician and uh, uh, they, uh, they are very shy about it and they don't know, they feel that, you know, they can't go to a doctor and they, that they will not get any kind of help. So they don't go. There are a lot of, you know, basically the problem is ice of work, which comes to us. Most of them don't know it. So we have to open them up and find out about their you know, problem and uh, help to, uh, you know, solve this problem so that they they don't suffer in silence. So welcome, okay. Dr. Shobna. Thank you, Anju. I hope Dr. Anju, you as you said, it is not only learning each and everything, but also knowing each and everyone through this webinar. Exactly, uh, Revti, madam, that is what I have enjoyed meeting people all over the country. And I'm seeing Sindhu and Angarkani and which I would not have been possible. How many places you can go personally exactly, now? Exactly. Because the webinar is I'm meeting people all around the country and me and Anju and Seema, I think we are enjoying the 
hospitality people yes. over the net madam it's very that nice there. to see every society um, uh, yeah. yes like actively this. participating yeah. nice because i've been traveling too much i thought i'll just take a small little topic and because a very eminent panelists are coming after me and i am very sure they will do a great job dhotika and uh, revti madam are both uh, power horses and that panel we are all eagerly waiting so i'll have a short presentation on local estrogen therapy and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity for this small topic i'm sorry i didn't have enough time for anything big okay you know what there's some joke about this how this estrogen was discovered you know they found that in men and women you know when they had dysmenorrhea they drinking the urine something happened to them so they used to collect 1500 150 gallons of urine heat it to facilitate the evaporation seal and sublimate and obtain obtain the residue and that residue was powdered to make a pill and you give 5 to 7 pills with wine or warm soup huh? and that used to be given for male hypogonadism importance and beard growth for all you know and female urine was used for dysmenorrhea this is how estriol was produced found out you know so this man on top is the one who actually di diagnosed all this you know so he determined that ovarian follicles precede the appearance of confirmed spawnified cells in the vagina imagine sitting in your consulting and thinking of all this so he showed that extracts from the so ovaries when injected into ovarectomized mice resulted in the production of conified cells in the vagina see we all are enjoying these webinars because of the hard work of these people so using this as an assay i see the name of the man he isolated the female sex hormone estrone which is called thelin estriol which is called thelol and hundreds of gallons of human pregnancy urine i think thelol and all sounds much better than estrone no? i don't know why they changed the name anyway one driver by making collections of urine committed a traffic violation excuse me doctor shobna one second somebody joined with two devices there is lot of disturbance so if the person who has joined with two devices please log out yeah it please mute everybody else yeah yeah that's yeah. better please. except But the speaker please mute, all, please mute yourself yeah please so they lot yeah, of disturbance mute request. everyone yeah please yeah, yeah. okay so one driver while me, still let us say okay so one while uh, he he made a traffic violation you know he was carrying all this urine and he made a uh, this thing and that you were uh, that uh, policeman saw the amber colored food he thought he was a bootlegger carrying booze you know so he would fight with the driver and, and so then the driver uh, had fun he said okay you drink it and find out so he pulled the cork and that so much of smell was coming and then he realized oh oh, oh he is right it is urine and like and then uh, the cop said my god it is urine your job is bad enough without getting pinched for it so drive on so he was uh, you know they said no traffic violation you can go off with your urine so that's how uh, east is how tough it was to actually like uh, find out this estrogen and all that so the most potent of it is 17 estradiol followed by estrone and then estriol so it is derived from androgenic precursors already always androgenion and testosterone from there only you get estrogen after all even in the biblical era eve was supposed to have come from adam's rib imagine this is the genesis in the bible what they are saying of course modern science won't agree but everybody thinks women comes out of man you know so estrogen comes out of androgenic precursors all all you all said and done and we are actually to our topic today is local estrogen we can understand that estrogen is there in urethra trigone vagina uterus ligaments and so if it is not there you will get dysuria urgency incontinence recurrent uti urethral prolapse ischemia of vesical trigone and vaginal wall prolapse that's what happens when the patients are 70 75 and uh, long back they have undergone hysterectomy the wall will come down if they have not undergone hysterectomy the uterus will come down and before menopause it's you get a rugous vagina after menopause you get a bland vagina and so estrogen causes better trophicity in the epithelium and better vascularization and better closing pressure of the bladder so that's the importance of local estrogen so the estrogen has got a high thickness 
before menopause, low thickness with the superficial layers going on. Therefore, the craniopycnotic index is the only way to find out whether estrogen is there or not. So, uh, estrogen has got only short-term interactions with alpha and beta receptors and it will stimulate the superficial and intermediate cells of the vagina, but only short-term interactions with alpha and beta receptors, so there is no change in endometrium. You do not require to give progesterone. And it is useful in overactive bladder syndrome and vaginal atrophy, not uh, as per research done even as late as 2018. Whatever is there in book, we don't bother to do research. But research is continuing even now to prove what was proved earlier. They're still continuing research in 2018. But sole treatment of sexual dysfunction, including diminished libido, for that local estrogen won't be effective. Okay, it can uh, improve your vaginal atrophy and overactive bladder syndrome, but not diminished libido. And uh, therefore, for that, you can't give it. You have to give your tibelon or androgen or whatever. Another thing is stress incontinence will not improve with local estrogen. Now, one thing is, is there a, at all uh, uh, the connection between incontinence and menopause? There are many studies. I'm just giving you the my viewpoint of all the studies that are there in the literature. But is incontinence caused by menopause or are the changes caused just because a person is old? See, in fact, they had a study among men and women, you know, 39 years, 2.4% only had incontinence, but more than 60 years, 10% had incontinence, even in men. Where, whereas in women, 30, uh, only 7.3% had incontinence before 30 and much more in after 60. So this is because of cerebral pathology, which can be seen on MRA as white matter hyperdensity lesions are not going to improve with your estrogen. And the SWAN study also where they studied 1,500 women for six years. I am finding it so difficult to get 2,000 women to study even for six months. And these people have been studying for six years, but they found there is an increased risk of incontinence, but there is no significant increase in SUI and the urge incontinence is gone. The Whatever stress incontinence is increasing, it's because of obesity, not menopause. And another study with 6,000 women, they found a positive association with high estradiol level and urinary incontinence. That means even if you start giving more estrogen, you will have more SUI. So that is also there in one study. There are other studies in a summary of RCTs, use of, use of oral estrogen increase the risk of urinary incontinence in women by 50 to 80 percent. That means the SUI will increase when you give oral estrogen. So in her study also, incontinence was supposed to be increased with estrogen. So where are we now? Somebody thinks there is a boat and when that, that fellow in the boat is thinking there is land and both are actually in distress. So you think estrogen will solve all your incontinence problems, but when you start giving the drug, nothing works. So this is a little confusing, but the position statement of NAMS finally in all this confusion is that low dose vaginal estrogen therapy may provide benefit for urinary symptoms, recurrent UTI and for uh, over in, uh, overactive bladder and urge incontinence, that's all, okay? So that is all that will work out. So that's the final thing. And vaginal creams, I'm just telling you the doses. Uh, they are estradiol, uh, 0.5 to 1 gram daily, conjugated estrogen, 0.5 to 1 gram daily. Vaginal tablets are not available here. It was available so long back. Now it's not there. They are the ones which are really good, you know, estradiol tablets. Somehow nobody was prescribing and it was costly or something. Uh, Ospermifin tablets are there. Vaginal rings are there. Now, uh, all these are not really available here. So, vis a -vis dose of oral estrogens when you comparatively see con vaginal conjugated estrogen has got very little estrogen, 0.312 compared to 0.625 or 1 milligram of oral ones. 
and 0.5 of 70 beta. So it's much less than the oral estrogen. That's why uh, it does not require progesterone treatment. So if you are going to be using conjugated estrogens, uh, you can use half to two gram daily intravaginally depending on the severity of the condition and taper gradually to every alternate day and later twice weekly. I had recently a stress, uh, stressed call from a colleague who said that I was using this cream, it's not available anymore and now I'm using the other cream, it's not working and my husband is very angry with me. And finally, I managed to get this cream for her. Hopefully, she's happy. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work for some people. Is, this is one I'm using routinely because the conjugated estrogen is not easily available for me. It's useful for many people. One applicator full of cream 0.5 gram twice weekly for at least six months and then twice weekly for another uh, this thing. So initially daily and then twice weekly or estradiol vaginal cream 0.01%. So all these companies, they say we have micronized tablet and you use quarter of it. No, the dose is much different. You'll have to use one eighth of that tablet and you can't powder it and give it like that, even if it is a micronized tablet. So you can't, you have to have it. There are, you know, women just need a reason to have sex, but men just need a place. And so... 50 to 79 years of age, women were collected and they actually asked this question, are you having this? And 52% are having sex. 22% after 70 to 79 were having sex. So you need to know about all these drugs. It's not a joke. And non-hormonal lubricants are used as first-line therapy, but it doesn't work. Your olive oil, coconut oil and uh, hydroxyl gel. So local estrogen creams, you have to know because there are a few people who are having it. And you don't want the husbands to say, my wife is a sex object because I every time I ask for sex, she objects. And why is she objecting? Because she's got pain. And if she's got urgency and she has to look for a toilet every time, you will have to use your estrogen cream. And because it does not change the endometrium, you can use it for how long? Cochrane Review has given you a clean sheet for practically 24 months. They have got studies. So these ladies with urgency or these ladies with uh, problems with husbands, they can use it clearly for two years. No problem. There are studies. Probably even more we can't know, but the studies are there. Without progesterone, you can use it for two years. No issues at all. So it has to be applied with a plastic applicator. I have a nurse who will teach them how to do it. They have to stand and they have to put the applicator inside. They have to be taught because everybody is scared of that applicator. Now the problem with this uh, therapy is, you know, the epithelium matures with estrogen therapy and the absorption increases. So you have to start the therapy before there is irreversible atrophic changes. That's why it doesn't work in some women and it does work in others because in the patients where it has gone into total atrophy, even if you apply your estrogen, it's not going to work. But the uh, fun part is that plasma estradiol are lower with local estrogen. I don't know how that occurs. And there are relative contraindications. You can't give it in your breast cancer patients, even if it's low dose. History of endometrial cancer, porphyria, it uh, exacerbates no, estrogen. Severe acute liver disease, hypertriglyceridemia, thromboembolic disorders, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, endometriosis, and probably even fibroids. I don't know, but fibroids we can even give orally. This is written from the books. I'll give you one patient of mine who had undergone menopause at 42 years. Quite young, you know, those days. Came with severe vaginal symptoms and uh, also UTI, 40 pustules, and there were red spots on vagina. She was given estriol cream. But she, without informing me, she continued the prescription for one year. She got addicted to it. She says, I can't go without this. If I stop it, I will get pain. And then she gets breast pain one fine day. And she went to a surgeon. She undergoes mammography, so much of mental trauma. And she did not tell the surgeon that she had been using vaginal cream. So actually, even vaginal cream, if you use it for one year, Although there are studies for two years, you must understand that breast tenderness and things like that may happen. And you have to tell them not to worry. Of course, my mammogram is not going to do anything wrong. 
But now she got fed up. I, when I told her that, she stopped the vaginal cream. And she, I was sitting in a conference. She calls me up. I'm bleeding profusely. I said, how can she bleed profusely? She's gone into menopause. But then after the conference, when I came, she was actually bleeding from the red spots, like withdrawal bleeding from those spots, you know. And it was endometrium was thin. I know you people will say you are not looking at the endometrium. I did look at the endometrium. Endometrium was thin. So there is some bleeding from the spots like withdrawal. This is a case that I saw. Then finally, I had some local emollient creams lying on my table. I gave it to her and she was asymptomatic after that. But the pus cells in the urine came back because UTI also gets cured with Evelon. And then uh, she is now with the urologist. Thankfully, she's not with me because she has no pain. No, Only urology means she will go to urologist. So suppose a patient who has got hot flashes, should you still use local estrogen? Yes. 10 to 25 percent of them will still have urogenital atrophy and they there may be an additive effect now you have to learn something new if i go tell you all this you have all learned all this before so one thing you have to understand estriol cream does not convert to estradiol in the liver the pharmacokinetics of this preparation make make it an easy choice for women who have had or are at high risk for breast cancer for endometrial cancer. This is from one study. Although another study I showed you, you are not supposed to use it in breast cancer, but she, some of them have this radiation and all these wrong severe vaginal symptoms. In 2004, they have given this report. You may try it. That is there. Now, another study, let me tell you. Everybody doesn't like to, to use a stick and I told you the vagina atrophies and then if you apply the estrogen, it doesn't work. So, uh, there was a study. Uh, so, in fact, I, I'm sorry, I got mixed up. Let me tell you this study, which was done in 1981, long, long back. You know, they were applying this cream and they actually studied all the FSH, LS, prolactin, thyrotropin, GI, and the lateral vaginal smear was prepared. Everything they studied. Imagine how much they studied. And they well, found that before treatment, the estradiol level was there and after treatment, it actually decreased on day 21 and on day 56. So this decline apparently coincided with the normalization of the vaginal mucosa. This is in 1981 maturitas. So even though the plasma levels of the estradiol was reducing, the karyopycnotic index is improving. It's a contradiction, no? Now I'll come to this study where uh, they have uh, found that 95% of menopausal women with dyspareunia have in entry pain, you know, vestibular pain. And so even in when you give intravaginal creams, they don't improve. So one person, what they did, he, they combined this estrogen cream with uh, local hydrophilic creams, you know. Why it is so? There are nerve plexus in the vaginal submucosa. It is composed only of sympathetic and parasympathetic axons with smaller contributory shins by sensory fiber. So you think the if I, vagina is painless, it's not like that. There are contributions by sensory fibers. So in the vulva vestibule, the sensory nerve endings are dense and shallow, making this region physiologically more sensitive. So what happened? They had two groups of women and they had graded the dyspareunia, grade one, grade two, grade three and all that. And they were instructed to apply with the fingertip 0.25 gram of the vaginal gel containing 25 milligram of the uh, of this thing daily for three weeks and twice weekly for one week, just like how you do the vaginal thing. And after 12 weeks of therapy, 25 milligram of estriol applied to the vulva vestibule, there was significant decrease from the baseline in the mean score of hysperonia. That means if your intravaginal is not working, you can even try applying it on the vestibule. And for people who are scared of applying it inside, you can apply it on the vestibule. In this particular study, they had mixed it up with the local emollient creams with hydro. But uh, maybe you can take it one step ahead and just apply it outside without any cream. So all these things are possible. You have to think uh, out of the box to treat your patients who are not getting uh, treatment as per the rules in the book. So uh, vestibular neuro... Why all this happened? Does this pain when the, it's there in the vestibule? How do you diagnose? It's a sharp burning pain localized to the vulva vestibule. 
in response to light pressure. When you just touch it, it will be just painful, almost like your vulvodynia. The vestibular neurogenic inflammation, altered peptinergic vestibular innervation and genetics, all that contributes to abnormal inflammatory cascades. The vagina can also develop mark the trophy but does not become tender to the same extent so the veget there when you apply it doesn't work but when you apply on the vestibule it works this may explain how coital pain cannot reverse with estrogen inserted into the vagina and it is uh, you know inserted uh, useful in vestibular allodynia so in this study the highly hydrating properties of the gel were possibly adequate to prevent uh, discomfort. This study came out in 2016. Another uh, local uh, drug is dehydroepiendoestrogen. Vaginal DHEA is supposed to be very effective and an alternative to vaginal AT. If anybody is going abroad, you can get it and give it to your patients. And that's about all that I can try and talk to you about local estrogen therapy. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shobhna, for enlightening each and every one of us with your beautifully made slides and covering each and every aspect. Only one thing I would like to ask you here that, you know, uh, guidelines say that you can apply the cream only this time, this much time. In your experience, uh, you know, do you feel that there is, is there anything, you know, different about the, uh, different from the guidelines? The, I mean, I'm talking of the duration. Duration, I told you, I gave you a patient who's been applying it for one year. And some of them do apply it outside also. And uh, it does work. No, no. How, how, how long can they use it? I'm telling you, I have the longest that a patient of mine has applied it is for one year. No, because I she's have... a relative of mine. So I know she's applied it for one year. Otherwise, I normally give it for three months. They don't come back. Then how do you know how long they apply? So I have had the experience of, uh, you know, treating period, uh, patients for a longer time. So okay. what I found was that, you know, they, those patients, and especially what I have found in my practices, that, uh, you know, uh, these problems of, uh, you know, at vulvar atrophy are more severe and more prominent in uh, patients who are fairer because their skin is supposedly more thinner. Mm -hmm. And what I have found is that these patients, these are the patients who require the treatment for a longer duration. You know, we may. So, how long have you given it, uh, Dr. Anju? Yeah, I have given them for five to ten years also, five to six, seven, ten years. So, because, you have you know, gone out of the box that... beyond that. I did their yeah. endometrium? I, I told you that plasma estriol levels, estriol levels, yeah. are actually decreasing in one in, study. In, in so, the, you in, don't in... have a problem. In one patient, the endometrium increased to. Uh, you know, um, increased to about 6 mm, but she did not have any other problem because I was regularly monitoring these patients. And these are the patients, if you decrease their dose, they come to you again and again because they they have come to me in a stage where their vulva uh, were already joining. Congratulations, the... Dr. Anju. You have really given a lovely case history of five years application of this drug and their patients are going back to Anju. I don't know what magic you have that patients come back to you with this small little problems for five years. I, how many of your because people can I, go I stuff seen, that? You know, I, they have these cuts in their rural folds also. But they come to the same doctor for five years and uh, you're even looking at their endometrium and everything. It's a real good, lovely, lovely output that you're giving. Anybody else from the audience? One, of the, one of the oncologists in our last meeting described from Pondicherry is it 10 years of use of uh, vaginal estrogen resulted in endometrial carcinoma and they were put in trouble? So, uh, yeah, and Anju yeah, say, Anju, yeah. don't go for another five years. Huh? Five years <laughs> you can use. <laughs> no, no, what, what I want to say is that you See, know, you Jyotika can, wants to know what, what uh, which preparation you used, Anju. Uh, I you, I prefer to use the uh, ethanol estradiol and I given a minimum ethanol dose. estradiol, which is that? Which uh, cream is that? Pre 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 sorry. Uh, conjugated estrogen. Conjugated That's I told you now. One uh, one yeah. doctor said that yeah. that works better than the other one. Yeah, that this works not, better. It's a one. it's a conglomeration and, of all estrogens. It's not yeah, and estrogen. I, I decrease to the minimum and maintain it. And when if the patient comes to me with recurrence and problem, then I increase it. Then I again decrease it. You know, you you really need to 
you know make it up and down kinds and okay. uh, uh, that yeah, really this... helps them and oh. one more thing is when you apply, they apply in the lower one third of the vagina the effect is less this also i have seen in many cases it yeah, is better but in that particular the... study one study which i quoted they had yeah. they have actually studied it on the vestibule maybe yeah. that's that only one study maybe yeah. yeah yeah so what what i have found is that when they apply in the because in some patients they are not able to apply in the exactly uh, in the vaginally yeah so uh, we need more and more is... people to give us reports now these are all case reports by one single gynecologist so there we should be we need to have more and more studies yes. from uh, medical colleges yeah, well. yeah. shobhna and dr shobhna i, I just i yes. just want yes. to... yeah. madam has done study on phytoestrogens uh, now she gets excited whenever i talk of study really i i say that it is not the phytoestrogen is a comparative study of the phytoestrogen and uh, this thing uh, estrogen <laughs> hemihydrate tablet Anyway, uh -huh. I am just going to quote a case who uh -huh. has been having the problem of the urinary incontinence. She mm -hmm. was visiting a urologist. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which, some, uh, which, which incontinence? Urgency, overactive, or uh, SUI? It was a uh, it was a urgency. So urgency. she was uh, okay. she was uh, she was um, examined by some lady doctor because it was a male doctor for the okay visiting. okay okay. It That's was solid. the vagina was absolutely red and inflamed. Okay. So she was referred to the gynecologist for the biopsy. They did mm. not do the biopsy of the vagina. The urologist. Okay. So okay. she, मतलब this is a friend of my own friend's mother. Okay, madam, so, come with the case. Huh. Yeah. So <laughs> she is the one who came who came to me. I saw it was really red in frame. Those days we do not used to have so much friendly uh, with the photographs and having the camera all the time so we can click and all those things. So we I have done the biopsy. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I have just given Primarin cream for the local application. Okay. And you will not believe within three weeks, she improved a lot in her mm -hmm. urinary complaints and in her look of the vaginal skin, vaginal mucosa, vaginal mucosa. And the uh, inflammatory, the report was the biopsy was the inflammation only. Nothing else. It was. So I think many of us have and got stories. You know, like this. it is. It is nearly thirty years. She is still alive. Not she is a eighty-five um, uh, or ninety years old. My God, like that. that's great. And so you don't I'm, have to apply I, it for I, ten I, years. Yeah, I keep on meet, uh, meeting her daughter. So she she is also a doctor. So how she long says, did you give this drug? Because everybody is worried. She, now I she said was in my, for, uh, she was, four months is there was, in the uh, she was consulting review. me. Anju has got uh, five years. Yeah. And then Revti uh, Jankiram, like opposition leader, she says no, 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 no. Ten years and we till cancer. So she was uh, consulting me. One more thing, three to four years. So uh, here's years, another case. But now what Dr. happens? Dr. Yashodra has used it for women. four years, and you can stop yeah. it and live for the remaining ten years. And she has seen her after twenty no, years. No, now what happens? These people buy over the counter without asking you. So she yeah. says, "Madam, she, uh, my mother keeps on asking me to buy this estrogen, and she, whenever she gets uh, some problem, Which she just applies." She's been a study material for four years, but yeah. then after four years, in spite of stopping it at eighty-five, she's symptom-free. That's no, also important. She, she she keeps she keeps on using it. She is not symptom free. She oh. over uh, over the counter. She used to buy and then she used to apply. She's still using then, it at eighty five. Yeah, yeah. She is still using it. Revti, madam, no cancer. So <laughs> what I here I have to add one more total. Shubhna, hi, hi, doctor Revti. Total cases you can't go by there. Okay. Yes, unless so, you have got ah, a study, you just take the individual individual cases. Yes, I agree. South you Indians are not very happy with the North Indians who are going cases. on giving uh, this thing cream no, and but, cream and cream for years together. We are very skeptical because, because these these people buy over the counter without consulting you. Yes, and yeah. they apply yeah. two three weeks. And they get symptom free. They again stop, and then again after six months they get a symptoms. They again apply, and then again. See, but Bangalore and uh, Madurai are very skeptic. Don't do this, they are saying. No, one more thing I want to add, Doctor Shobhna. Yeah. I have seen. I have seen one thing, Doctor Shobhna. Yeah. Yeah, I want. I have seen one thing in the women who have recurrent UTI problem. Yeah. Yeah, we all they have seen that. We have they, all they seen that. They get benefited by local estrogen. Very, they, very much. So yeah. you can be one upon your next doctor if you give them creams. It is many women who are not coming and 
it is Sorry? not it is many many women who are in their 60s 70s and 80s they keep on having recurrent uti they keep on going to the urologist yes. nobody okay. informs so them we are all happy with it examines this. them nobody yeah. does anything to so them there are case reports then, of by chance uh, okay. by uh, any chance they just visit you and when you ask you some of the some of the now gsm this is breast cancer survivors with gsm management is really really a tricky one as you said yeah. can't be really but really. in non estrogen dependent cancers in breast cancer survivors yeah. for you gsm can. they are not going to respond to the other therapies non hormonal sometimes you are forced to use it there is no chance of a recurrence in those cases reported yeah yeah with the estriol cream i did quote that study yeah vaginal no? yeah vaginal uh. vaginal estriol yeah yeah, yeah. can be given because as no, she the, said the serum estrogen is not increased yeah if the bottom exactly. line is for 2 years you can use it without endometrial surveillance after that if you continue to use it please do endometrial surveillance that's what anju did that's exactly all. exactly okay i so, believe i believe this should be done because we did a, a study for one year in which we did not repeat we just do the vaginal cytology and vaginal cytology and ph is very very informative Yes. vaginal cytology because if you see the parabasal okay, cells and the okay we will not repeat thank you thank you okay we will not need to do the estrogen it okay, is only ma'am. the okay, vaginal okay, okay. cytology is enough to okay now anger can you please introduce the next chair person and the next doctor anger can you yes madam yeah uh, welcome dr sumati sumati is there yeah. yes madam yes madam uh, she is uh, she is at present she is the professor and hod of department of obstetrics and gynecology government rajaji hospital madurai and she did her ug and she has secured I university mean, rank and she did her pg at madras medical college and all is for sure training ke liye aa gaye and she is a member to everybody else please she is a member faculty in... yeah anger gun is also muted Anger, can you unmute yourself? Madam, it is uh, okay. Madam, just a uh, uh, brief introduction. That is enough. And right she now. has been awarded a Foxy Leadership Award and also received Best Doctor Award during COVID sessions, both by from the Minister, Health Minister, as well as District Collector. Over to Doctor Sumati. Uh, good evening, Madam. I really thank Doctor Ray, Madam, for the opportunity, and also Shobhana, Madam. And uh, shall I have the CV of Doctor uh, Vidyamani? Yes, sir. yes. Sir. I have, I have shared. It's there, no? Is it visible? It is Shobhana only. I am getting, madam. It is not. Uh, no. Madam. No. No, madam. No, it's uh, next, next, madam. Ah, uh, yeah. Is it there? Yes, madam. Vidya. Yeah. Make it full screen, uh, Doctor Vidya. Hmm. Can you read it, Sumati? Sumati, uh, Doctor Sumati, can you read it? She's gone off for what? Hmm. Okay, Doctor Devi, you read it. Uh, Chandru, please. Let me under can you? Ah, yes, madam. Ah. Uh-huh. Welcome, Doctor Vidya. She is a senior obstetrician and gynecologist in Door, and uh, uh, she is uh, running a uh, state of art clinic and she is an editor for foxy connect and she has represented india at international platforms like rcog figo and ims and she has been awarded fellowship of indian college of obg and she has got many awards wonder foxy and award sage shakti award etc and she is a life member of foxy zar indian societies of gynecological endoscopy and she has been faculty in several national and international conferences over to you madam thank you very much thank you very much madam and uh, i am going to start my slides sharing can you see madam can you hear yes, me we can. yes 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 Uh, solutions for uh, to end those hot discussion and at the outset i am very thankful to madurai ims society and its pre- presidential activity 
thanks to Dr. Shobna and Dr. Revti and all administrative wing and the faculties and uh, the honorable guests who are invited here for the show and most important, the participant. I am very glad to see the number of these participants. Dear Madam, stress urinary incontinence, uh, vaginal atrophy, vagina, uh, genitovaginal syndrome, GSM, as well as uh, so many problems of pelvic laxity that is called pelvic floor defects has subordinated our women since ages and never had any concrete medical solution. If she comes for some problem, but there are mixed problem with all the patients. So there should be something that can target each and everything, not exactly the 100%, but yes, a quality of life can be improved. So there are a lot of researches going on in this direction. And I am going to talk about the medical power or the magic power of lasers in uh, cosmetic gynecology. It is nothing cosmetic. It is the functionality that is going to be restored by these newer modalities. The body of evidence about management of pelvic floor disorder that actually is the reason for all the type of problems from young to very old age and it continues to grow in a newly board certified subspecialty that is called female pelvic med medicine and the other is the reconstructive surgery. So these are the common pelvic disorders we are all practicing doctors this is this list is not new but they are all intermingled we can say no patient comes with a single problem that i am having as you i am having sexual dysfunction there are a lot of things uh, they are there and they present with multiple symptoms and then the these type of disorders actually causes physical psychological social and lifestyle uh, changes I do not deny that if there is some facial or severe muscular defects, then these are our gold standard procedures we have to perform for PFD, that is pelvic floor defect, and we respect these procedures and anybody, any company people, any energy-based device people or laser people, if claims that this laser is the best because it goes very deep and it corrects all, is completely wrong. We just want to improve the vaginal mucosa to uh, have a good functionality with vaginal mucosa and related organs. So uh, because of the physiological changes, a very best new thing I could heard from Dr. Shobna, it's not the estrogen, it's not the anything, it is simple aging that causes so many problems. So aging, weight fluctuation, hormonal changes and physiological changes of pregnancy and childbirth causes laxity, devitalization and damage of pelvic. So what is vaginal relaxation syndrome? It is coming like a new title in functional or aesthetic gynecology and it is the loss of rugosity. The vagina becomes roomy because of the childbirth, aging and hormonal changes and then this patient refers VRS as a roomy vagina and the first thing that uh, actually affects their life is the sexual gratification that is confirmed by pioneers in this field, Williams and Johnson, that there is no friction because a vagina become roomy. So it is not getting any satisfaction to male as well as female and there may be absence of orgasm. Then another thing that happens sorry, is the stress urinary incontinence. We are talking so much about the diabetes, depression, hypertension, and there are so many other things. Uh, they are there with the increasing age. But if you see the bar, the blue is, the dark blue bar is the biggest one. So from the age of early 20s or 30s after first childbirth, patient starts suffering from urinary leak that increases by to 80% to 80 to 90% of our women. So we should have something that can treat this thing, that can improve the quality of life. We cannot ignore these patients having so much suffering. We are talking about placenta, previa, PPH, what not? But I think we should think about the patients who are suffering from these disorders and almost 80 to 90%. And then 
uh, it is the hypermobility and it is due to intrasphincteric deficiency mesh procedures they are the gold standard but we cannot offer to a mass uh, number of women number one and secondly mesh complications are very high and apply uh, and applying a tots at these all they may land into overactive bladder so so actually the gold standard procedure is are for very severe cases and then the most important thing that we were discussing in last 15 to 20 minutes is the severe gsm the dryness the cuts the wound the urethral carinkles the redness they are not allowing you to touch what is the problem with your creams? Because the pH has so much change. Glycogen is not there. Collagen is not there. So your even local creams are also not doing so wonders as they are claimed. And then we have to think something out of the box because of these reasons, our even estrogen cream, and then they are coming again and again with the same problem. We just want to leave them or we say that uh, doc, that you have to apply this cream for whole life but it's not working these are the modalities to correct this lex vagina as well as the related uh, issues but there is a big thing that is coming uh, into uh, the world market and now into the indian market is called energy based device just to uh, conclude that every device is uh, the principle is same that they are going to uh, improve the collagen inside the vaginal wall but through fast forward uh, my uh, slides i will not i will tell only the names and how much they are working according to the modality you are using. So it is the collagen contraction, neocollagenogenesis, growth factor infiltration, revitalization. And in this uh, bombardment or a big list of the energy-based devices, they are there in the market and market people are approaching you. So you are always confused because the indication and the use are the same what they claim. So these are few devices. Uh, radio frequency, you must have heard most common name, uh, Thermiva. Uh, it is very much useful for the women who are coming for the contouring of the external vulval area and not for uh, very aggressive for uh, urinary incontinence and for the vaginal tightening. CO2 laser, it is very promising, but you have to select your patient because CO2 laser works in a different mode. It makes a micro ablation. If your tissues are very bad, if it is fibrosed, if it is cracks are already there, hemorrhage, you can see, you cannot afford to throw CO2 lasers on those type of perineum. So you have to customize your patient and you have to actually see your patient, what is the age of patient who are coming to you for this problem and what type of device you should take. HIFO again for more contouring and then RBM YAG laser, it is uh, uh, the non-ablative laser and it is the laser which is FDA approved for uh, this uh, vaginal mucosa and that I am using since five years and I am very happy to share Dr. Yashodhra was there in one of the international IMS co conference with me in Mexico Cancun where I was first sensitized with this new modality then I was uh, tracing then I hypothetically recruiting my patients from my own practice whether it will work or not and then I went for the super specialization of laser and then Finally, in last five years, I am using it. So a little bit about the laser as we gynecologists are not using. It is the light. Light has energy. Laser light goes in a collimated waves like it, they are the coherent waves. So they can be focused on the point where you want to give a therapy. They are the stimulated emission of photon that has tremendous energy that is actually formed a wave and that is delivering the, uh, the energy. What is this name of the lasers? If a laser light is going through a gas, it is gas. If it is a liquid, then it is pulse dye laser. If it is a solid media, then it is called RBM or NDAG laser, what I am using. 
what is the effect of the laser on the tissue basically it is the photostimulation of the tissue and then photodynamic reaction takes place and finally photothermolytic action takes place that actually causes new collagenogenesis and then then one term is chromophore what is this chromophore chromophore where the laser light is absorbed so if you are working on a skin or a melanin is the chromophore if you are doing something uh, laser procedure in the vasculature it is the hemoglobin but in the case of vagina you have to see a device or a laser which is maximally absorbed in the water will work in the vagina so rbm and co2 lasers are the two lasers which are maximally absorbed into water so it they are good for vaginal tissue and what they cause thermal effect causes increment of fibroblastic activity there is a release of cytokines and neocollagenogenesis and this actually takes place because the heat that is delivered inside the vaginal wall inside the uh, this uh, epidermis actually causes heat uh, the synthesis of heat shock protein and when you study the biophysics of laser it is the first step of conversion with the transforming growth factor and there are so many uh, chemical reaction that you can study in the biophysics and that gives a real sense of satisfaction that it is going to produce a new collagen as we indian women are having poor type of collagen 3 which has more tensile uh, this thing uh, uh, strength and strength is so weak so we are getting more pft so it is converting some collagen tissues from 3 to 1 and thus improves the uh, your effect of a laser this is something to uh, again this uh, describe that how uh, what type of laser or what type of device you, you should take is that it should be like uh, that deliver thermal effect of only 50 to 60 degree because up to that point there is a reversible denaturation means your proteins will convert into better proteins but anything more than that like in carbon dioxide laser or any laser that works at 50 more than 60 degree then there will be coagulation there will be damage there may be some uh, problems to a very very senior person but if your patient is young coming for vaginal tightening for pfd for first and second degree uterine uterus or yes co2 laser can be of help to that Uh, this is a little bit more i am not giving into but i want to show you the third step where the tissue remodeling takes place by 30 to 40 uh, days there is a mature collagen fibers there is a increase in the collagen there is increase in the new vascularization vessel formation improved lubrication because of this glycogen and restoration of ph then your creams will be very very effective after actually making this tissue a more uh, comfortable to absorb your local um, applications and it is wonderful in a very young patient who are coming to you for recurrent vulvovaginal and urethral problems and you are fed up she is fed up of taking antibiotics antifungal and no, what not and to the partner treatment but they are not actually Uh, responding because the ph has changed so nothing is working on her uh, rbm this is a little bit detail we can have some more meetings as 15 minutes is allowed this is just to compare the efficacy and safety with the co2 laser this is a diagram i want to show when you will go into more details for biophysics of rbm is smooth it actually causes dual tissue remodeling and finally after 6 months of period there is a significant thickening of a vaginal wall and new collagen synthesis and it is 100% safe it is in non ablative don't confuse that it will cause laser means some fibrosis thickening and uh, that causes uh, vaginal tightening it is the formation of collagen granules 
they collate they collate and they form a fiber and after first second third therapy they combine and make a beautiful new collagen fiber as it was there 10 years before or 20 years before so this modality is safe this is uh, to show you the histopathological picture it is after treatment you can see how much is the new vascularization and collagen tissues are there these are the mri pictures to show the the improvement in the vaginal wall as well as uh, change in the uv angle that is the hypermobility is the reason and it is actually getting corrected by new collagen uh, this is a type of therapy i am giving that is called intimalize from the same machine when we want to give tightening or if the woman is coming for sexual dysfunction with the looseness or she comes with the first and second degree of prolapse or some patient who had has this cystocele and the bulge so they say doctor i am i was feeling this bulge before surgery and again i am having that bulge and that sense of dragging when i stand up you are not going to operate her again for the cystocele so this is a very good answer for these patients uh, incontinence that. is the for incontinence therapy and uh, you can see how cumbersome is to apply tvts uh, the urological people the gynec urology they are very comfortable but average gynecologist is actually searching for a urologist friend to apply and then medical comorbidity sometimes they don't allow general anesthesia and how easy and friendly the application of lasers and then this is something beautiful boon for the gsm women who cannot allow you to just touch just give a renova lace therapy from the outside and when the collagen is restored they are more than happy and they say ki doctor i can move in the market in my knees or a marriage i could go for purchase and so many good things she will speak for you and then this is not future we i am really happy to share you that i am having this more device as when i was working uh, only treating the patients from intravaginal side is not working so we are using this intra sphincteric device because these patient typically says that whenever they get out from the bed they had a dribble and uh, sometimes when they change position in the bed they had a dribble so this is something to address uh, these intrasphincteric deficiency and when you go inside the more studies the hypermobility and intrasphincteric deficiency both are actually giving trouble for uh, for in the sui patient <clears throat> this is jiranar is this is a robotic arm more patient friendly we all gynecologists are busy with our own work and then operative work and labor and what not so we also want to give something which is not should not be a manual one so it gives a accurate delivery it senses how much energy will be given and it gives a shorter treatment time so very friendly to us but very very friendly to our patient also lot of clinical trials dear madam they are going into uh, international market and came into the publication and i am really happy to share that my own publication is also accepted in our indian journal also and waiting for its entry into the uh, international journal of ims so i just want a blessing from you people and the results are very very encouraging gumrs uh, study for incontinence 94% of patient reported improvement 68% claim to be free of sui revri is for the average shrinkage of vaginal canal that can be seen was 12.2 per mm and they are doing and we are also actually measuring our own work by perineometry and pop quantum Histonic studies is again for SUI uh, very encouraging results and nine in Gravier study ninety five percent the vaginal tightness and strong and moderately improve in the intimalis therapy the Sarka Glue study is a more elaborate one we are following them we are doing uh, perineometry POP quantum then King Health questionnaire and I will see my own work so. this is in conclusion it's a very very patient friendly uh, thing and uh, uh, this is my own experiences we had one more uh, center dedicated meant for this because we want as it was a new therapy i wanted to give some more time to my patient for counseling and uh, then there, there is a 
uh, automatic segregation of these patients uh, patient when this center is formed. So it was, they were not coming to the main OPD. So it was very easy for me to pick up these patients. These were our initial studies for uh, who were completed three cycles of lasers. And uh, uh, if uh, 177 were in condylase, 38 was for tightening and 72 for Renova lace therapy. And we are uh, measuring our work uh, pre-laser uh, with the King Health questionnaires. We are um, uh, having these uh, prepared forms. Two girls are sitting. So everything is sorted out. Sometimes if the patient is educated, we are giving that form to her fill so it is better uh, actually uh, say feedback from our patients and uh, we calculate the score and then finally make in a statistical form for our to see our own work in timales we are doing fsfi fsds that is female sexual distress uh, inventory and fe female fe uh, sexual dysfunction and we had this questionnaire from renovales we are doing a lot of work for these GSM women. We are seeing the laxity and then we are uh, <clears throat> assessment of Bashman vaginal health index. We are doing the elasticity and uh, pH study by litmus paper and uh, the visual examination and coating. And sometimes we do the karyopycnotic index in very, very severe cases. Now, dear madam, uh, I want to just share that this is nothing doing with the lasers, but if you improve your collagen with the laser, what about the muscular tissue that is lying there? Kegel exercise, good for young patient, but very old patient, very obese patient, they don't actually do, they want to do, but they cannot do the that focus type of muscle exercise. So we have this uh, electromagnetic stimulator and you must have heard a name, Amcela. Amcela is another company, the BTL. I have taken this laser from my own laser people. So uh, we are uh, putting these uh, patients on uh, program Kegel exercises when they come for urge, mix or overactive. In between, we are preparing the tissue and when we find a per perfect time, then only we give laser. If they are very much improve with this this we don't give laser then our own because this also causes neoangiogenesis and uh, coordination of pelvic muscles so sometimes they are just happy with these sittings also and this is the more elaborate studies to show our work that uh, the, how uh, the things are getting improved in the King Health questionnaire and in the GSM, the vaginal health index is also improved. And for tightening the young patient, there are, they say, almost 100% we are uh, free of this laxity. We can feel the rugosity and the friction and they are very happy. So if we do non-ablative lasers and we put in a smooth mode, then we can do mild to moderate uterocervical descent, cystocele wall prolapse, SUI, recurrent vulvovaginal uh, and urinary infection, tightening and urogenital syndrome. But if you keep on a turbo mode, cutting mode, then it can cut hard boards. These lasers are such so we can do cervical erosion, poly, priuresis. We had one more study that is waiting for our Indian menopause journal is that we uh, had very good experiences of lasers with, in the case of lichen sclerosis. We could not free them. Only two patients in 34, we could free the uh, that uh, mute. And and the yes. Going to yes. So uh, these are all testimonials and we are actually training, uh, giving trainings also, so that it should be a cost-effective learning for my Indian friends. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, madam, for your uh, talk and informative talk. And really, in the South India, I think it is not that much gained popularity. And uh, it is very good, madam. You are preferring laser, madam. And how much uh, this laser effect will last? Madam, we have to, uh, is it, it is a process of aging that is giving us trouble. So we are giving in the three settings, like zero, two months, and six months period of time. Yeah, but after stopping, how long? Uh, I'm telling you, madam, if it is a young patient, then um, the my first patient, it was five years back, was only 32. She was my niece and having severe SUI. She is telling me, Vidya Bhavi, you have done wonders for me. But a very severe cases of GSM, 
they may come to you after two years of period of time and you can give a touch up setting to these patients. It is nothing uh, costing them and you also. Two years, ma'am. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So one more uh, question is from whether the estrogen uh, can be combined with laser. Uh, not at that time. We are actually uh, combining PRP therapies. That is a sort of regenerative processes for giving a long-lasting result, especially in the cases of lichen. We are giving lasers and uh, PRP therapy. But estrogen cream will automatically work when the tissue is uh, improved. Like if your patient will come for dryness after 35 years or after correcting her infection and all, if you give her, she will be comfortable for that. So there is no need to give, uh, means estrogen is a gold standard thing and I'm really very happy to hear this uh, elaborate lectures on estrogen therapy by madam. But yes, just yes. the maintenance dose will be for, for, for estrogen will be there and uh, we cannot deny for that. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Angir, can you shall we move on to the next one? Angir? Dr. Angir, can you? Uh, next, we will move on to the important panel discussion by uh, both moderators, Professor Dr. Revati Janayiram and Dr. Jyotika Desai. I welcome both. And uh, Dr. Revati Janayiram does not need any introduction. And she is the former director, IOG Chennai, Vice President, CNO4G, Foxy South Zone 2016. And she is the founder, secretary, and past president of Madurai OBG Society. And she's president IMS Madurai Menopause Society. And she is a recipient of many awards. And she's a master trainer for PPIUCD program and author of Foxy Focus on Amniotic Fluid A to Z. And she has contributed many chapters and many books. And about Dr. Jyotika Desai, and she is a senior consultant and chairperson website committee Indian Menopause Society. And she's a past president of Bangalore OBG Society and also uh, Bangalore Menopause Society. And she is a Foxy South Zone quiz coordinator from 2012 to till date. And she has organized IMSCON 2020 Bangalore. And, and she has got the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017 from Bangalore OBG Society and Award during 2019. Over to you both, ma'am. I'll stop sharing and then I will share the. This thing. Now we see, uh, is my screen visible? Make it thank yes, you. Madam. Yes, yes. yes, madam. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Angir Kandi, for the nice introduction. And uh, I really yeah. thank Dr. Shilpana for giving us this opportunity to Madurai Society. And I have my dear friend, Dr. Jyotika from Bangalore, to join me as the moderator. And let me introduce the uh, panelists first. Dr. Prabhavati from Hyderabad, who is President of Hyderabad Menopause Society and recipient of so many awards like Young Scientist Award, Kim Gaurav Award, and Tanak Goel Award. Dr. Saroja Veluswamy from uh, Dindikal. She, her field of interest is in NDBH. Dr. Sunita Prabhagaran, Director of Sumati Hospital, the first ART hospital in Madurai, and she is academically much interested. Dr. G. Vita, Graduated from PSC Medical College and recipient of uh, Best All-Rounder Award, Appreciation Award, Foxy Mox and Young Talent Award. And Dr. Narumalar also graduated from Madurai Medical College and have got a lot of, undergone a lot of uh, fellowship courses. And to her credit, she is the one who is getting the first prize in so many IMS quiz competitions. And Dr. Hema Malini from Tirumangalam, she's also from Madurai. And she's academically much interested and she has presented many papers in Foxy. And recently she has presented a paper in OCOG World Congress in 2022 held in London. Now, let us move on to the topic. As such, vulva is an area least understood, least examined, least cared for. And even as teachers, we don't teach much about vulva to either the PGs or UGs. Uh, but in the last few years, much of the interest has been uh, gained or learning about vulvar problems. It is the only area where epithelium from all three embryologic layers coalesce. It is structurally a convergence of skin, musculoskeletal, vascular, neuronal, and endocrine systems. But predominantly, most of the lesions are a dermatological problem. But you know what happens in menopause? Because of various changes, 
vulva and vagina also undergoes changes in menopause, which by themselves can contribute to symptomatic conditions. Now let us go by uh, one by one the various problems in the uh, vulva which we have to manage properly. <coughs> vulvar pruritis is the most important, frequent, at the same time unpleasant symptom, which is associated with many dermatological conditions due to infection, inflammation, and so on. Now the main problem here is that it leads to impairment in the quality of life. That is very, very important. It also has got a, an impact on sexual function, relationships, sleep, self-esteem, and so on. And if you see the incidence, it's only just a 6 to 10% in general. But if you go to the vulvar clinic, it's quite high. 70% of the patients come with a complaint of pruritus. Now, Dr. Hema, can you enumerate the causes for vulvar pruritus? Dr. Hema, please. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, etiology for uh, pruritus vulva may be uh, infections, uh, uh, which is the commonest cause, and uh, among which uh, the fungal infection, uh, candida, and uh, trichomonas infection contributes for 80% of uh, uh, pruritus vulva. And other uh, infections like viruses uh, is sexually transmitted diseases, parasitic infections, infestations can uh, cause pruritus vulva. And chronic uh, diseases uh, like uh, lichen uh, simplex, lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, and psoriasis can cause. And secondary causes are uh, uh, due to allergies, medications, estrogen deficiency, tight clothing, shaving, intimate shaving, uh, intimate hygiene, and psychological causes. And uh, pre-invasive lesions like uh, vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia and Pages disease can also cause pruritus vulva. So any woman who comes to the pruritus vulva, we cannot just wipe off, but we have to look into all these causes and search that so that we can manage them properly. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Hema, this is a patient, 67-year-old post-menopausal lady. She has a history of new onset diabetes. She complains of severe itching and burning of the vulva. Also, why discharge for the past two weeks only? What's your diagnosis? The clinical picture is like this. Uh, this may be a case of uh, monilial infection, that is uh, vulvo vaginal candidiasis, uh, uh, because uh, uh, there is uh, curdy white discharge and uh, erythema, erythema, and uh, patient complaints of uh, itching. Okay. Now, what are the things you think that they can predispose to this uh, candidial infection? Uh, this uh, candida infection can occur in uh, diapetus mellitus. Um, uh, in uh, patients with immunosuppression, uh, patients with uh, HIV, uh, and uh, patients who are on prolonged uh, and, uh, uh, course of antibiotics and prolonged uh, steroid therapy, and uh, genetic predisposition is seen in recurrent uh, candidiasis. Um, these are the predisposing factors. And uh, clinical examination, a patient will have uh, vulvar erythema, pustules or erosions, and uh, vaginal discharge may vary. Uh, patient will have symptoms of uh, pruritus vulva. Burning is commonly observed. Uh, patient also may have uh, dysuria and dyspareunia. Yes. How are you going to manage the patient? Because uh, the last uh, residential webinar, we had a lengthy discussion on yeast infection of the vulva vagina. Okay. I, you just mention a word and then we can proceed on to the next case. Uh, uh, candidiasis can be ma managed with uh, Solzman. Okay, fine. So all the details, all of us know. We move on to the next case. Uh, Dr. Jeevita, this is a 43-year-old male who came with a complaint of pruritus vulva for six months. But at the same time, on an examination, we found that she has also got an itchy sore on the undersurface of the toes, as you can see in this picture. Now, what is your diagnosis? The clear-cut lesion in the vulva as well as in the underneath the toes. Uh, this could be a case of tinea with the uh, raised edges on the uh, raised edges uh, with central scarring, erythematous lesion. And uh, this is this is tinea because she has in other areas like toes. And some patients can have under the breast um, in flexor areas. Mm. So you have to look, into, look for that also, like under the breast, armpits, abdomen, panels, toes, everywhere. Okay. It is likely to be there also, isn't it? How are you going to treat it? Uh, quadrimazole, topical quadrimazole creams or terbinafine creams. Uh, if it is very extensive, then oral treatment is given with uh, itraconazole tablets. 
or oral terbinafrine tablets for uh, treated for a long time she, since she has uh, multiple lesions about two to four weeks. So topical how long and oral how long? Is all, it enough single dose or orally? No, or, uh, all for uh, two to four weeks. Prolonged treatment is required to treat the lesion. So you first try with local, try with with local. go for oral? Yes, ma'am. Or once you see an extensive lesion, straight away you go for uh, topical as well as oral? Uh, uh, confined lesion, then we can go for topical. If it is extensive with multiple areas, go for oral treatment along with topical. Combined. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, Dr. Narmalar, another patient of 45 year old, she has come with a complaint of CPA reaching vulva. And on inquiring, she said that she had used some uh, cream, depilatory cream for removal of hair. And the picture is like this. What is your diagnosis? Evening, madam. So, with the history, and uh, uh, we see the lesion that is an erythematous lesion that is that is uh, formed after the application of the depilatory cream. It goes without saying she has uh, got an irritant dermatitis due to the contact due to the cream. So that could that acts as a that has caused a non-specific lesion in the vulva due to the direct uh, skin damage by the chemical. Okay, so it can be either an irritant or an allergen. How to? What is the difference between the two? So an irritant is a non-specific skin response, madam, due to a direct chemical uh, acting on the skin, causing damage. Wherein there are release of inflammatory media cells. In allergic uh, contact dermatitis, what they say is during the first when the patient is first exposed to the uh, allergen, they doesn't. Uh, they don't get any lesion. When they are exposed to a second time, there is an exaggerated IgE-mediated immune response and they get this allergic dermatitis. Okay. Now, can you mention some other factors or substances which can produce a contact dermatitis? Now, this uh, patient had used some cream. No. So, like uh, this and usually people who deal with the uh, who are in use, uh, water, household women, household workers, Healthcare workers in contact with water, in contact with uh, irritants like urine, feces, sweat, even uh, tight fitting uh, cloths and uh, wakes in using waxing for removing the hair, and uh, harsh towels, even hot water, using hair dryers, and deodorants like spermicides and lubricants, and clothes containing these are so dense. These are all, they act as irritants. Allergens we commonly meet with in women using feminine hygienic products, not that they get it even in the first instance. While they keep on using it, they are getting more prone. Preservatives used in the detergents and soaps, and even in the cleaning wipes, wet wipes they use. Antiseptics, even nail polishes, perfumes. That's why we advise women not to use deodorants and perfumes in the private parts. Even topical steroids, some people may get allergic to. And the antibacterial, antifungal agents, rubber product, the pessaries they use, the condoms, and the vaginal diaphragms, and even sanitary pads. Commonly, we see small children using this uh, uh, diapers, and the uh, very next day they get it in the same fashion. Okay, okay. That's why we say that this tight fitting clothes must be avoided. Even the adolescent girls, right from that time, also they use this. Uh, leggings and all huh? tight fitting especially during periods they should avoid uh, this tight fitting because uh, uh, that cannot keep that area dry and clean and it may cause irritation now what are the types of pleuritic vulva dermatitis there are three types madam one is an atopic dermatitis and that is a genetic that is these women these people they develop an exaggerated ig mod mediated immune response and that is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Irritant contact dermatitis, as I said, it is a non-specific skin response to a direct uh, irritant and, and, and agent, which releases inflammatory mediators. And allergy contact dermatitis is a type 4 hyper delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. Now, see, few patients have come with this picture. All the varieties of uh, irritation and dermatitis. What do you think could be the cause for this? When we look into the configuration and the way it is affecting it, it could be due to some diapers or some sanitary pads that have been using. Okay, this is actually due to diapers only. Now, apart from that, these chemicals also, which we are 
regularly using that can also result in contact dermatitis allergic okay like local benzocaine neomycin and disinfectants as you can see in this picture okay now how do you manage the contact dermatitis it is very easy to make a diagnosis how are you going to treat them so we we'll have to see that the the agent that has been causing it has to be uh, removed that is we should keep on using the same agent so you have to stop using that particular affecting agent and also ask the women stay hygienic practices don't use too much of fragrant uh, uh, some uh, what to say uh, many people use uh, perfumes on to their vaginal parts it's better use it use warm water no soap avoid close shaving avoid back keep uh, the keep the uh, keep the area it works well and even moisturizer and lubrications with vegetable oil and better well top steroids that's wonders my two high potency steroids a triamcinolone 0.1% and fosinolide 0.05% to be used for one or two weeks in very big years Hey, how do you think that this uh, diaper uh, contact dermatitis can be avoided? Uh, diapers better they uh, they need to use it for a long time. Better they avoid using it, and if at all they want to use it, they have to use it for a shorter time, and they can use zinc oxide uh, for protection. Frequent changes. The menstrual cup. See, ah, menstrual cup. That is what I wanted to ask. Who is telling that? Yes. Jyoti menstrual cup is the thing that we are advising with the benefit that uh, this sort sort of a derm contact dermatitis can be avoided. Okay, I have seen it with extensively with whisper. Yeah, <laughs> they are telling now which type of uh, diaper is better, this brand or that brand, and all those things. Uh, and the, the advertisement that the cloth is uh, very bad, and you have to go for the diapers only. In advertisement, we see that. No, that's wrong. So, Actually, you should use only cotton ones. Ah, that is the thing. So that we have to make it clear to the uh, women, to our women. Okay, that's very important. Now, Dr. Prabhavati, madam. Now, this is a case of forty-year-old woman who came with a complaint of whitish discoloration of the vulva only for the past six months. Earlier, she had suffered from itching in the vulva region. She had earlier, and she got somewhat treated or not treated. I don't know. But this patient now has come with this picture of vulva. What is your diagnosis, and how can we treat it? Yeah, this could be a post-inflammatory discoloration of the vulva. Uh, earlier, she must have suffered. That's what she was telling about uh, that she had an episode of itching and uh, scratching that could have uh, healed up like this. Earlier, she must be having hyperkeratosis and thinning. Also, sometimes will be there. But right now she doesn't have any itching, but only she is bothered about the discoloration. So, mm -hmm. post-inflammatory hypopigmentation we say, and uh, uh, higher strength uh, steroids only can help her uh, to, I mean, reduce the. But for a longer period, it has to be used at least for one month or so, so the pigmentation uh, slowly comes back. And but we have to, I mean. Um, uh, differential diagnosis with uh, vitiligo also uh, in these cases, you know. Mm. Uh, this so, patient, this is another patient, okay? similar picture. I think many of us would have seen such cases also in our yeah, practice. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, this vitiligo, what is the difference between this and this uh, post inflammatory hypopigmentation? So, are they same or different? They are different, ma'am. Oh, okay. uh, so, when the, the topical therapy is unsuccessful, sometimes, you know, uh, we have to go for skin biopsy. A biopsy only clinches the diagnosis for vitiligo and the post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. In post-inflammatory hypopigmentation, you'll get only uh, melanophages on uh, biopsy and histopathology. For vitiligo, you'll get melanocytes will be seen. And of course, treatment will be similar for both because this is vitiligo is an autoimmune problem. Vitiligo should we treat or uh, leave or when to treat? So, same, madam, uh, huh? we give and uh, try with the steroids. Of course, they might be having sometimes along with the infection also, they'll come back with itching and all that. Then we have to give secondary uh, antibiotics and all that and the local uh, amylins we have to give. 
Okay. Now, Italy goes is an autoimmune disorder. You can go for a. I mean, I I feel only if they are symptomatic, we may have to go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Then only. Uh, the don't need. Yeah, yeah. But Italy goes in other areas like the face, hand, and all for cosmetic purposes. They may have to go for treatment straight away. Okay. Yeah, PAH. Uh, sometimes we'll give do the chemical peeling and uh, photo chemotherapy. Also, may be beneficial. Uh, mm. Uh, vitiligo because since it is as you have said narrow band uv phototherapy sometimes it might help only thing is secondary infection has to be treated yeah now this is the patient before and after treatment with topical yeah, yeah. so they excellently the uh, big pigmented patch is up there almost they are normal some cross talk is coming ma'am in the yeah yeah but all please mute others but all so next coming to the non neoplastic epithelial disorders of the vulva now that is this has undergone multiple iterations over the past 30 years mainly to accurately categorize the clinical and histological findings now at present we have got these three types like and sclerosis squamous cell hyperplasia that is lichen simplex and other dermatosis. Okay. Now, the three lichens are lichen simplex, sclerosis, and planus. We will see one by one. Now, first of all, what is uh, lichenification? Uh, can Dr. Saraja can tell what is lichenification? We are talking about a lot about lichen sclerosis, lichen simplex, lichen planus, and so on. What exactly is meant by lichenification? Dr. Saraja, are you there? Or Dr. Prabhavadi yourself can take up. Dr. Saroja, are you there? Any, any thickening a, of the... Yes, uh, madam. The lichenification uh, is any thickening of the skin of the vulva or thinning of the uh, vulva. Any dystrophic lesion, we call it as lichenification. Any dystrophic lesion. Hmm. It, it just because of the repeated scratching, it needs to dry thick. hard. It becomes yes. thick and fissured thick. skin. That is lichenification like this. Okay. Now, can you uh, tell a little more about the lichen simplex or the squamous cell hyperplasia? Squamous cell hyperplasia is otherwise known as lichen simplex chronicus. And uh, it is uh, high, more, uh, the incidence Absolutely. is more compared to lichen sclerosis and lichen planus. Then squamous cell hyper, uh, repeated trauma due to the repeated trauma. The lichen simplex, uh, 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 lichen simplex chronicus is an atopy or due to autoimmune disease, the gene genetically mediated immune response to IgE, it may come. There will be a lichenification, erythema, for appearance, uh, there will be some fissure. Mm -hmm. See, the slide is not uh, showing that thing. Uh, fissure, dry scaly lesion with the erosion, and exaggerated in the skin fold, the lesions will be there. Very thick, rough, hyperpigmented patch. Sometimes hair fall in the affected region will be also be there. Okay. Regarding the symptoms of the lichen sclerosis, lichen simplex, the symptoms may be itching, uh, definitely itching will be there. Yeah. Then there will be a, uh, the, the lesion will be asymmetrical for appearance, not like the contact dermatitis. It is asymmetrical, uh, asymmetrical in appearance. And eczematous raised lesion also will be there. Uh, Interesting. The main thing is that there is a itch, scratch, itch again. So this is a vicious cycle going like on. Vicious cycle. You have to understand. It's a cycle. It's a cycle will be there. Yeah, it's so we have to cycle break cycle. cycle. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. And the for the family the and personal history also. Now, do you think that you need to do a biopsy in this patient? If it is like continuous thing, you have to do a biopsy to rule out pre malignant lesion. Now, how many of you agree that you should respond to treatment? Like in simplex. I don't think it is required. She is not uh, responding to treatment. Very rarely. Okay, but uh, generally it is not That's necessary. Generally it okay. is not necessary. Okay, okay. Now, this is the thing what Dr. Saroja described. Uh, as you can see in the, all these pictures, red lichenified flakes, thickened, and this erythema, loss of hair, and also thick, rough skin with hyperpigmentation. So, all these things may be uh, presented. Okay. Now, how do you treat it? 
like in simplex it is an atopic disease then geni genetically mediated uh, so we have to give that a clobetsol uh, ointment for external use and then if recurrence occur uh, we have to uh, educate the patient about the recurrence and psychological stress and does not represent treatment failure so psychological stress will not uh, represent a treatment failure it may be due to her psychological thing so mm. we have to break the each and scratch cycle now immediately then mm. infection uh, as a prescribe uh, prescribe so how do you have to, to break the cycle each scratch we have to we have to advise her we can give antihistamine also and then her uh, Uh, excitement is to be reduced and psychological stress and uh, we have to treat her no more than they can also they have got the intense feeling to once they have the itch they want to scratch okay either the pants yes, yes. or with the inner garment them. okay so you can ask them instead of scratching they can just use cold water cold water washing like that so they are, they have to avoid scratching okay apart from using these medications that also you have to advise them properly of course Uh, clobetasol again can uh, reduce the feeling of scratching and then break the cycle also okay and this dose it should be given as uh, it should be used as a bd for two weeks then i have to say for 0.5% bd for two weeks then daily for two weeks then uh, three or four alternate days for some yes, other week alternate days slowly you have to take alternate right week okay. uh -huh. two weeks slowly tapering and whenever necessary we have to repeat along okay. with that we have to give the sedation also okay and okay. psychological stress should be reduced yes 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 that is why i said valvular lesions have got uh, it is an interdisciplinary area that is psychologist um, dermatologist endocrinologist gynecologist everyone will have the, uh, this thing in a part in the valvular lesions okay now sunita An elderly lady has come with this complaint of again itching vulva. See, when a woman comes with the vulva uh, pruritus, a lot of problems you have to anticipate and look for. Okay, now this patient had itching for one year, and she is she has attained menopause twenty years ago. Of course, she is a diabetic as well as hypertensive, and when you see her, you find a lesion like this. Now, what is your provisional diagnosis, Sunita? Ah, uh, good evening, madam. thank you for inviting me for this uh, wonderful panel madam this patient with her typical history of uh, post menopausal by 20 years that indicates a very low estrogen content already an immunocompromised state because she has diabetes and hypertension as we can see the lesions have a characteristic symmetrical pattern they have a figure of eight pattern they are they surround not only the vulva but also the anal area it extends below and above there's a thinning it's very pale like a papery appearance the typical cigarette paper appearance as we describe in uh, lichen sclerosis this can also be uh, lead to later on it can lead to erosions bleeding because even with minor trauma this thin skin can bleed easily and uh, lichen sclerosis we know that uh, sometimes it also has a family history these people their even their mothers would have had this history of low estrogen production and they commonly present with pruritus once they itch there is pain dyspareunia dysuria dyschezia and the usual symptoms uh, of course as it progresses the sclerosis becomes more and more advanced and then that leads to a distorted architecture of the entire vulva there is uh, you cannot uh, retract the skin over the clitoris later on there are labial adhesions and uh, total distorted architecture even the vaginal introitus becomes narrow and as as we know mm. uh this is not like uh, the squamous uh, hyperplasia this is a pre malignant condition so we can't tell when the transition happens from lichen sclerosis to a malignancy now do you think that uh, we have to necessarily do a biopsy here yeah. yes madam it's, it's pre it's 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 pre malignant and the longer this has been present the more likely the the chances of malignancy over 5 years it may be 3 to 5% and, and over 10 ten... uh, timely treated lichen planus lichen sclerosis is unlikely to undergo a malignant transformation do you agree or not uh it may recur also madam even if we treat and then go it may recur immediately when the estrogen becomes low again 
So if it is persistent for a longer period of time, still it can be malignant. And when before we start treating and even during treatment, repeated biopsies we have to keep uh, doing to rule out malignancy. Yes, yes. Because of the chances from 2.5 to 5 percent, the biopsy is mandatory, mandatory in these cases. And what will be the histological picture like if it is cellless, like in sclerosis? Uh, the epidermis will be very thin and there will be hyperkeratosis. These two are the main uh, hallmarks. There will be yeah, hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, elongation of the retapegs of the thing. This is the characteristic picture of lichen sclerosis. Now. Uh, just recently, we had a workshop on colposcopy cervix and the screening and all. Now, do you think that colposcopy can help in these patients to pick up the uh, pre-malignant or malignant lesions in vulva, especially in this patient? In lichen sclerosis, because there's so much keratinization, the vulvoscopy or colposcopy may not help that much, madam. Exactly. You know, because you cannot see the vascular pattern, distortion and all those things through the vulvoscopy. Okay. It's, not, it's not that good as you see in the cervix. Okay. Anyway, the details mm -hmm. of the colposcopy will be described by uh, Dr. Jyotika later. Okay. Now, suppose the biopsy has come as negative for VIN. Now, what are you going to do? Uh, these patients also, we will just uh, avoid the triggering factors, the local irritants, if there are any infections, secondary infections, we'll treat that. And we have to give them uh, potent steroids, topical steroids. This has to be done for three to six months, like clobetazole ointment. In the same way, we taper it high dose initially and then taper, but for a longer period of time. And uh, if it doesn't uh, heal, then maybe we have to repeat the biopsy again to rule out. Okay. How are you going to follow up these patients? We can follow them up clinically. If the symptoms seem to be persisting, then maybe biopsy, madam. I don't know. So because once cured, we can't just leave them. Yeah. Isn't it? They need, they need long-term follow-up. Yeah, Especially yeah. if they have like diabetes or hypertension or they have other immunosuppressive conditions, then we, they little more closely we will have to follow them. Okay, 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 okay. Now, what's the prognosis in these cases? They'll respond well to or treatment. Much, she is much worried it's because of the fear of cancer. Because all the time, cancer phobia is there for all women. Especially when you take a biopsy and all, they get lot. They get worried a lot, isn't it? Yes. So, no, they respond well to how treatment. Are you going to to them? They do respond well to treatment, but the only thing they have to be counselled is to keep up the follow up and make sure it doesn't advance so much that the anatomy gets reversed. Like the previous uh, Dr. Vidya was mentioning so beautifully how the extensive lichen sclerosis responds to PRP and laser therapy. Apart from that, any other topical ointments we give may not reverse the structural changes, but we can catch once it early. Once scarring occurs and thickening and prevent. occurs, uh, yeah, that is the thing. We have to prevent that. Yes. Okay. That is yes. the, that's why we use the steroids. Yes. Isn't it? Mm. Yes, madam. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, this is how uh, somebody like described this. the figure of fate Probably. picture, the shiny crinkled, and also the smooth hypopigmented vaccination. There are various uh, types of presentation of this lichen sclerosis, uh, which you can just look at and then easily identify also. But when not treated, it can progress to even agglutination of the entire uh, yeah. well, well. vulva and uh, narrowing of the introitus, dyspareunia, and the total anatomy can be distorted. So you should not allow them to go to that extent. So to uh, start treatment as early as possible. Okay. And what about lichen planus? Sunita? Sorry, madam. Yeah. Uh, lichen planus is a different, it's also a chronic skin lesion, but the, uh, sorry, it's, a, it's an autoimmune disorder. Here, the T cells target the keratinocytes which are among the keratinized squamous epithelium so this is also a chronic condition this is mainly oral but some of them also have associated vulval lesions but the picture is different because there it is cigarette paper like lesion here it is a red inflamed lesion the ulcerative type the erosive type is the commonest type there are also papulosquamous and hypertrophic types so we can see the mucocutaneous erythematous patches there is a hyperkeratotic border, and here there is no keratinization. It affects the non keratinized part of the uh, labia. You can see the lesions like this. Like this lesion. lesions yeah. are 
red glistening mucosal patch or yellowish streak and all those things okay how do we treat it like in penis we can give uh, same ultra potent steroids clobetazole we can also give uh, pimecrolimus cream which is a calcineurin inhibitor tacrolimus and if it is really severe short courses of oral prednisolone or methotrexate something similar to what we give in uh, uh, psoriasis so for everything steroids sir when i was an undergraduate student one of my colleague male doctor he used to comment you gynecologist you know only dnc when you want pregnancy you do dnc when you don't want to do pregnancy you do dnc when you get period you profuse period you do dnc or you don't get period you do, do dnc <laughs> that is how he used to comment so like that for every lesion steroid is the main answer now do you agree that for all cases of vulvar pruritus steroids no madam no most of the cases if we avoid the trigger factors it will come down and some conditions where there is just a loss of uh, uh, lubrication or hydration some simple things like uh, zinc oxide cream or liquid paraffin will suffice these chronic conditions most of them require steroid therapy and we we should give it continuously at least for one month if we stop in between it will lead to recurrent episodes and uh, just as she said low, the duration of estrogen vagina is for long time it can cause complications yeah, and also yeah. this steroids yeah. local steroids yeah. for a long time can it cause any complications ah, how long yes. years i think maybe if we give it for uh, more than 2 years even the systemic absorption they say it uh, aggravates diabetes <laughs> so they are already immunocompromised so very yes, likely yes yes, yes. Yes, but i don't know whether we can as i rightly so, said steroid is not the answer for everything not as first of course it gives a remedy immediately that's a good thing but you have to find a cause and the relieve her from that cause and then you go for a milder thing and then add this and also not for a prolonged period steroids okay now methotrexate the, dosage madam can you methotrexate लास्ट Why? Why do you think that the vulva is area most likely to itch? Can anyone say? Because there is uh, the rate of trans epidermal water loss is significantly higher. Sweat, urine, friction by clothes, feminine hygiene products, all these things are that is the stimulating well, factors yeah. are more yeah. there. Low estrogen level in the menopause, and once the skin barrier is disrupted, they become more susceptible for again external or endogenous itch triggers. Okay. now to put it in short management of pruritus will be just as i was describing earlier pharmacological you go for topical, topical steroids, steroids or anti inflammatory like tacrolimus or pimecrolimus and capsaicin i don't know how capsicum capsaicin my mother used to take capsaicin capsicum uh, this thing for a headache this is a counter irritant like but i don't know how this capsaicin has been proved to be effective in pruritus also but that is there are studies which have shown that it is very effective in intractable pruritus of course systemic steroids only when they are not going to respond to local steroids okay and of course according to the problem there when there is a fungal infection azoles or neuropathic vulvar itch go for gabapentin and topical estrogen therapy as dr shobhana said when there is dryness atrophy because of that pruritus especially in post menopausal women and non pharmacological interventions are again very important you have to avoid all sources of irritation simple cleansing no irritate no detergent nothing okay no soap or nothing like that and of course zinc oxide or boric acid can also be tried okay now before i conclude i want to tell one important thing that vulvar hygiene we talk about hygiene hygiene everywhere so vulvar hygiene must be stressed okay that is very important and the panty liner is again a big question last uh, uh, webinar also we were discussing in length about this uh, use of routine vulval well, well, uh, routine panty uh, liner whether it is going to be helpful in keeping the area dry or it is going to cause dermatitis 
that is a big thing then of course you can go for phototherapy or and also cognitive behavioral therapy okay thank you uh, dr jyotika you can start sharing your i'll take over jyoti you did a very good job thank you thank you can you stop sharing yeah, yeah i have stopped already fantastic collection of pictures they are all yours or from where did you get them net 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 and they see valvar well, the vitiligo is uh, ours and other you can see the other pictures also no but the fantastic collection and i can see a lot of sweat that must have gone into collecting so many pictures <laughs> my <laughs> god has, i think uh, we'll never be able to see in our yeah. practice all this but you have taken so many okay jyoti tumna madam <clears throat> Now shall we start with Hema yes, yes. again? Uh, yeah, Dr. Hema, this is a case, you know, of a forty-year-old woman with the complaints of pleuritis valve of six months only. She was working in a dance bar. Now, when I say dance bar, you should know what could have been the possible lesion. Can you describe the lesions? I'll just try to point it, point them out to you. You can see the lesions here. so describe the lesions and what investigations will you do to help you in your diagnosis dr hema malni are you ready is she there hema she's not there dr jivita whoever is ready yes ma'am yeah please jivita uh, these are uh, raised white um what the like uh, lesions plaques uh, raised oh, lesions you have to inspect the other areas in the perineum cervix vagina um, what is probably it could be uh, probably it could be due to human papilloma virus yes uh, caused by 613 no not 13 6 11, 11 and 13 31 and 11 6 huh. and 11 Eleven and thirty-one, maybe. Yeah. Continue. So, and uh, we have to do a colposcopy for her. Look at the cervix, vulva, vagina, and uh, HPV DNA testing should be done. And we have to take the biopsy of the suspicious lesion to rule out uh, uh, in situ carcinoma. And um, also, other uh, you have to rule out other uh, sexually transmitted diseases like uh, VDRL, HIV. <laughs> Yeah, do you think cytology will help us? Uh, actually, it has a poor oh, correlation with the tissue. It has a poor correlation with the tissue yes, diagnosis. Exactly, exactly. So all these investigations should be done. Inspection has to be done because we know HPV is multi. It arises in multiple areas. So that is the reason why you have to inspect all the regions perfectly. So we'll talk more about colposcopy. Okay. Now, what are the indications for colposcopy in vulva lesions? How um, often do we do it? First of all, do we do it very often? Oh, uh, six months once it has to be done, madam. If she has oh, no, symptomatic the patient has come to you now, okay. Forget about the follow up. So, what are the indications for colposcopy? You see a vulva if, lesion. You've seen this if, lesion now. So, what's the indication? If she is. Uh, symptomatic with a ex, uh, to find out the extent of the lesion to locate uh, to which spot for the biopsy has to be taken and uh, and if she has some cervical pathology also we can identify to rule out carcinoma yeah there is one more indication which is really important when she has a persistent abnormal cervical cytology but when you do a biopsy of the cervix you don't find any cin so then you know you have to explore other areas to find out whether there is hpv infection elsewhere okay so that is why a vulvoscopy has to be done now this is something which is very important and which all of us need to know it is called three ring vulvoscopy trif now what is the meaning of three ring the vulva has been divided for the sake of convenience into three rings the outer ring which consists of the labia majus the perineum and the mons pubis the middle ring which consists of the anterior commissure and the prepuce as well as the labia minus and the posterior commissure and the inner ring which includes the clitoris the urethral meatus the hymenal res as well as the heart's line and the vestibule now why this difference because 
the outer ring contains keratinized skin, hair, skin appendages, and subcutaneous fat. The middle ring has a modified mucosa, no hair, no skin appendages, no subcutaneous fat, and the inner ring has a glycogenized mucosa with none of the other things like hair, skin appendages, or subcutaneous fat. So when you know these, uh, you do a three ring vulvoscopy, which is called a TRIV, you find that you can detect vulva dermatosis in almost 100% of the patients. The specificity being 96.1% and the diagnostic accuracy is 96.9%. So it's very important that all of us learn to do a proper vulvoscopy. Okay, coming back to you, Jivita. What are the differences between cervical and vulvar colposcopy? Can you just enumerate a few differences? In vulvar colposcopy, there is no transformation zone as in the cervical colposcopy. And you apply uh, acetic acid and wait for five minutes. So there is another difference here. There you apply 3.5%. Here yeah. you apply 5%. 5%. 5%. Yes. Continue, dear. And uh, the keratinized and the pigmented areas do not take up the acetic acid. So uh, you cannot see the vasculature at all. Hmm. Uh, colposcopy is useful only if the lesions are presented on the mucosal areas. And yeah. biopsy from multiple lesions have to be taken in case of vulvar uh, colposcopy. Yeah, that's right, Jivita. Now that is the reason why there is a very limited role for green filter in the vulva. Because the vulva skin does not show any punctation, mosaicism or vascular patterns. So that is one main difference. Apart from this, there are some other differences too. Can you name them, Jivita? The sites of the biopsy may develop a unusual That's vascular right. pattern after healing. And a long stem steroid application cause, cause the thinning of the skin. So that also will confuse the diagnosis. And acetic acid can be combined with toluidine blue uh, this uh, up, you have to apply and wash away. Once after washing, you diagnose the areas which is stained with blue. So the keratinized areas will take up the stain and that has to be a biopsy. The reason is that most patients who have pruritus, they'll all be prescribed uh, steroid creams like how Dr. Revati said. So this prolonged treatment with steroids can give us to thinning of the skin. And not only thinning of the skin, there is still angiectasia. So when telangiectasia is there, it looks as if there is a vascular pattern which actually does not appear in the vulva. So the colposcopies can get totally confused. That is the reason why we need to be very careful and get experience in vulva colposcopy. And also note that when you have an acetovite area on the cervix, you know it can be CIN1, it can be CIN123, or it can be a malignancy. But on the vulva, it is not like that, as easy as that. It may be VIN, it can be viral changes because of HPV, which doesn't account to be VIN. It can be produced by the Epstein-Barr virus occasionally. And when repairs of ulcers, erosions, scratches, etc., cetera, occur, you, this repair can give rise to acetovite areas too. And even with coital trauma, you can have acetovite areas. So you can get so many false positives because of this. And one very important uh, uh, information or other uh, pointer is that you must never omit to do the perianal region because that is where you have a whole lot of lichen sclerosis in the, uh, in the perianal region. And it's important for us to depend upon colposcopy and the biopsy. Why? Because we have no biomarkers to screen for higher risk patients and biopsy is the only the route left for us. Yeah, when you do with the, like how Dr. Jivita said, you first apply 1% toluidine blue, wait for it to dry. Then you rinse it with acetic acid, not with water. You rinse with acetic acid. And once you rinse with acetic acid, the toluidine blue from all normal epithelium gets washed away and you get it only on the abnormal skin and those areas are biopsy. Yeah, coming back to you again, so we find when we do a corpuscopy on a case that it, cake, it the report comes as usual VIN, HSIL vulva. So what are the indications for biopsy, Jivita? If you have suspicion of malignancy, 
if the diagnosis is inconclusive or the lesion is asymmetrical and it is very hard and firm uh, if you uh, even after prolonged treatment if uh, the, it does not resolve and sometimes the patient will be very anxious whether it is a cancer and they want to rule out uh, or any suspicious new lesions which develops again and again yeah if new lesions are there in a pre existing lichen sclerosis then you need to biopsy them and very important is that when you palpate the, the vulva if any area is firm to touch that area should be biopsied and non healing ulcers of course so vulva intraepithelial neoplasia or vin is a pre malignant lesion there are two types the usual and the differentiated the usual one is hpv related 90% of the uh, vin in younger women is because of hpv only 10% of vin in older women is because of hpv and then the other one is a differentiated vin which is which follows either lichen sclerosis or planus and it is more likely to become squamous cell carcinoma so what are the risk factors for vin dr jivita uh, sexually transmitted diseases like uh, herpes simplex or granuloma virus so you can ask other panelists also okay jivita yes ma'am done your job you did a good yes, job narumalar can you take it over dr narumalar are you there thank you madam yeah please okay. so uh, when we look into the various risk factors that we that goes in for uh, vin we see that usually the younger women are nowadays exposed to this high risk types we see less than 40 and also those who smoke those who have sexually transmitted diseases like herpes simplex 2 syphilis lymphogranuloma venereum granuloma yeah. inguinal or all mentioned these, it uh, these are associated with vin and we see that people with the uh, vin invariably we see that they are associated with cervical intraepithelial neoplasia in 11 to 75% of cases so we need to investigate them they may be associated 6% with extra pelvic malignancy they may they may need investigation 30% yeah. associated with pelvic cancers and also as we all know it is associated with immunocompromised states people undergoing re renal transplant systemic lupus erythematosus one thing we need to keep in mind it is vin is not associated with age or parity as we say with other uh, uh, neoplasia thank you narumala so it's very important for us to remember that age and multiparity they are not risk factors unlike for other pelvic cancers so what are the signs and symptoms of vin so we see that we don't have symptoms in fifty cases uh, so they are asymptomatic so we they may come with varied symptoms like they may come with pruritus they may have pain in the vulva they may be bleeding there may be an abnormal discharge they may come with the ulcer in the vulva or any warty growth or there may be any change in color an existing nevus may change in size so they can they can come with any of these symptoms yeah the important thing for us to realize here is that 50% are asymptomatic so what does that mean that whenever any patient comes to us please examine the vulva the patient may not complain of anything but there may be some signs for us to see for us to diagnose so don't lose the opportunity of examining the vulva thoroughly well now the classification of vin has undergone changes from uh, from a long time the international society for the study of vulval vulval disorders in 2015 have come out with the diagnose with the classification which holds good even today so vin 1 earlier is now lsl of the vulva now lsl of the vulva is usually due to hpv and this hpv is usually less than with the patient is usually less than 46 years and the types are 6 11 and 31 which are the uh, non uh, neoplastic types now vin 2 earlier has become hsl of the vulva or otherwise known as usual vin use in small letters vin now earlier it used to be called warty basaloid and mix that continues but in spite of having these three types we still call it only hsl or uvin now the differentiated type is the dvin 
This usually occurs with lichen sclerosis or lichen simplex chronicus. So the differences are quite a lot. We will just go through a little in a little bit of a detail. Now, when we come to HSIL or UVIL, it is a usual one. It's usually, would you like to answer, uh, tell this Narumalar? Not, madam. Would you like to tell Not. about the differences between HSIL and the UVIN and DVIN? Okay, yeah, sure, ma'am. The, the HSIL, that is the high-grade squamous intrapetal lesion, as I said, it is nowadays seen in commonly in younger women. It is related to the HPV virus type 16, 18, and 33. It is this HSIL that contributes to 20% of vulvar cancer. And there is a low rate of progression to CA, and the recurrence rate is also found to be low. Whereas with the differentiated type, which we say it is DVIN, it is mostly seen in menopausal women, though it is uncommon. This is rarely related to, rarely linked to HPV, mostly seen in women to 60 years, so it is not due to HPV, contributes to 80% of the burden of CA. The thing is, it rapidly progresses to CA and has got a high mortality rate and there is increased risk of recurrence, madam. Yeah, then the commonest site for VIN, please remember. You see the commonest the labia. Labia. The inferior part of the labia, my lord. Yes, yes, Dr. Narumala, thank you. Now, why is VIN a problem? Why are we so worried about it? Like how we, we worried about CIN? Can you tell we us? Don't, uh, we don't uh, see and we, we, can, we cannot diagnose it by certain criteria. No uniform appearance. In the skin areas, we they see they present as white lesions. In the labia majora, they may present as white lesions. In the mucosa, possibly in the near the vestibular portion, they may appear red or pink. As I said already, it is 50 percent. It is asymptomatic. And also, women never they they rarely examine themselves to note these changes. And nowadays we see that the incidence of this vulvar intrapetal neoplasia is more common in younger women and the progression to cancer is also more narrow. Yeah, that's very right. That's why we are worried about VIN. Now, there are some pictures here. This is usual VIN. You can see the red macular lesion <laughs> here. Because the sim like how Dr. Narumala said, the appearance varies from patient to patient. That is the reason why we cannot just Take it for granted, we have to do a biopsy. So there's a red macular lesion, there's a gray macular lesion here. And you've seen this earlier, they are raised white plaques here. And when it is associated, that was usual VIN. Now this is differentiated VIN. Why? Because it's associated with lichen sclerosis. So you can see how the whole vulval anatomy is destroyed here. And here again, you can see distortion of the clitoris as well as the labia. So how do you treat uh, VIN? Dr. Prabhavati, how do you treat VIN? Uh, this can be treated with uh, imiquimod 5% uh, cream, which is uh, immune uh, response modifier. Wait one minute, Dr. Prabhavati. We need to first decide whether to yeah. do medically yeah. or surgically. So when will yeah, you do medical? When will you do surgical? Yeah, if the lesions are very small and if the lesions are large uh, near clitoris or introitus or anus, medical management is advised. Uh, but before that invasion to be ruled out, that is application of uh, imiquimod 5% cream because it acts as an antiviral and anti-tumor properties along with the immune response modifier. But of course, the longer period is uh, advised, 16 weeks to 4 to uh, six months ah. treatment and three times in a week it should be given. And of course, pseudofovir uh, topical application also can be given. Five viral agent also works out. Photodynamic therapy using topical aminolibulinic acid is also advised, madam, medically. Yeah, that's right, dear. So the basic thing which you need to remember is if there are many lesions, one. Yeah. If there multiple, are large multiple. lesions, two. Yeah. And if you're near the clitoris, urethra, introitus, or anus. We have to give medical management because surgical management can totally distort the anat anatomy and yeah, it can yeah. interfere with coitus. Yeah. Tell us about surgical management, Prabhavati. Uh, before that, uh, pap smear has to be taken and HPV testing also to be done before the surgery. Frozen section will be done. Uh, frozen section lesions, is a must. You pick up the single lesions, raised, ulcerative or with uh, irregular borders. 
uh, those cases are fit for surgical therapy. Presence of high risk factors also we have to find out in the history. And wide excision with one centimeter margin is the treatment of choice. And of course, cold knife excision can be taken up. And loop electrosurgical procedures, uh, leap has to be done. Ablation is also advised, laser CO2 therapy. And of course, the latest one is the cavitation ultrasonic aspiration also have a role. Uh, but when we're talking about excision, earlier we used to say 0.5 centimeters. But the current recommendation is one, one centimeter. One centimeter. One centimeter. You can do it either with cold life excision or with loop electrosurgical. Yeah. One of the procedures you can do. Now, in the next slide is a busy slide, but it's very informative because this tells us, you know, uh, the yes. upper part is not seen anyway. When you do a wide local excision, we've already finished it. Uh, you remember that all DVIN should always be treated to surgery not to medical management yes, yes. because biopsy is essential. Now, when we're talking of ablative therapy, uh, methods, you've got carbon dioxide laser or you've got CUSA. Now, laser definitely is less disfiguring and you know where you have to do it. Then again, here, not one centimeter, 1.5 centimeter, 1 centimeter. The skin has to be vaporized, especially if it is multifocal, laser can be taken up and for recurrent lesions also laser can be used. But the recurrence rate is 17% and the disadvantage is you don't have any tissue for diagnosis to rule out cancer. Yes. Now, when you take out, uh, do ablative for, with CUSA, you can do it only in the mucosal areas, not in the hair bearing areas. And again, the recurrence rate is higher here, 35%. So tissue for HP provides only fragmented tissue. Of course, kindly... If you know, if it is more extensive, then you may have to do a skinning vulvectomy or a simple vulvectomy, depending upon the uh, the extent of the lesion. Uh, uh, Dr. Saroja, how do you follow up these patients? Dr. Saroja, are you there, dear? Regular vessel. Uh, yes, colposcopy uh, yes. uh, to be done every six, months, six months, regardless of the age of the patient and types of treatment and the extent of the disease. Yeah. And more frequently, the patient is immunocompromised. We have to do more frequently. Yes. And follow up is very, very important as they can develop squamous cell carcinoma later. Then high grade of recurrence is 20 to 40 percent. So we have to give whatever uh, follow up with the corpus can be 20 to 40 percent. Yes, recurrence can be 20 to 40 percent, and the psychosexual problems are also quite high. So she needs repeated uh, colposcopy and repeated checkup. Yeah, thank you, dear. Now, yeah, recurrence is higher when you do ablative therapy. We've already seen 35 percent. When there are multifocal lesions, the pause margins are positive. If your patient positive continues margin. to smoke, if there is immunosuppression added, and again, the local feature is if it's more than three centimeters in size, and of course, the patient is older than 50 years. Now we come to case seven. We just finished with VIN. A 56-year-old woman came with a history of long-standing pruritus and the difficulty with passing urine since two days. She had attained menopause at the age of 37 years, that is uh, premature menopause, and she had not taken any MHT. Uh, what is the diagnosis and how will you manage? Uh, we will ask uh, Dr. Saroja because she answered only one question. Dr. Saroja? Okay, so it is synecae of the vulva and uh, labial agglutination is the result of yeah, the, the result of the synecae. It. Yeah. it is higher in patients with the uh, diabetes mellitus who are not on hormone treatment and they who do not have any sex and 80% uh, uh, resolve without treatment but it may uh, persist even after that. We have to treat them with estrogen cream for one month. It gives 90% success rate but if it is petroleum jelly can also be applied and no, uh, uh, no, one minute. Estrogen yes, cream for one month and then right. after 
you finished with estrogen cream you we have to verify it. whether there is any still existing additions are there no no not like that when you've used estrogen cream for one month it is successful the labia have separated the labia minora have separated but you use petroleum jelly to keep the labia apart jelly to develop the labia apart okay ma'am okay re-addition yeah so recurrence again so then metamethasone or beclomethasone also can be used between and if two, it is not responding to that and the patient is very much afraid of the thing we have to do uh, when the adherence is very thick we can go for surgical management yeah between they are not responding between beta and beclo beclo is preferred because beta methasone can give rise to thinning of the skin and again it can become adherent so nowadays beclomethasone cream is prefer preferred yeah so in spite of medicine medical management you can have recurrence in almost 11 to 14% of cases okay now we are going to have an interesting session these are spotters uh, i mean we've been, uh, i think we start with sunita because she couldn't didn't have a chance to answer so we are going to go through very fast uh Sunita, what is the diagnosis? It is staring at you in the eye. Bartholin abscess. Yes, yes, it is a Bartholin abscess. And uh, how do you manage it? Must in if if it's an older patient, then it's better to excise the whole gland because yes. of the risk of cancer. In younger patients, it would be a masculization. Perfect. The, the the reason that's the reason why we put it up here because all of us should know that if a Bartholin abscess is found in a menopausal age group. please do an excision of the gland don't do marsupialization because you may leave a, a, a gland with chances of developing carcinoma later on and why does it remind you for kangaroo the marsupialization i think the pouch so the kangaroo is a marsupial right <laughs> okay thank you dear now let's take the next uh, yeah we've answered this now let's take the second one next one uh, dr hema malni mm -hmm. what is the diagnosis the pay, it causes recurrent attacks of intense pruritus you can see the small lesions here this is a case of uh, herpes simplex uh, type 2 infection yeah you're right it is herpes simplex type 2 because recurrent you know it completely goes up and then it comes so when a patient gives you that history of course you'll do the hsv uh, igg and igm and then you don't need to do it but if you want to you can confirm it and then give her of course yes. a course okay. of uh, antiviral agents dr jivita what is this you can the see all all warts here all well warts. warts caused by human papilloma virus yes dear and uh, the vaccine to be given is uh, quadrivalent vaccine gardasil which can prevent this yes if you can have not nonavalent that's nonavalent ideal okay but at least let us try gardasil so that it can prevent it and this is by 6 11 and 31 dr narumalar what is this so this is condyloma acuminata yes and uh, what is it due to uh, it's due to human papilloma virus man. yes again the same thing which we saw earlier but here it is you know a worse way though it is not going to cause any malignancy can condoms prevent this condition no no ma'am it is uh, the wherever there is skin to skin contact it uh, yes it doesn't prevent and what are the how how will you treat them uh, we can uh, treat with podophyllin local podophyllin 0.5% protecting the neighboring areas then we can apply imofimod cream this uh, this imofimod cream uh, can be applied and it acts like an immunomodulator It increases the local immunity and helps the virus to pass off. Yes. Cryotherapy can uh, we can just get rid of the lesion using cryo, madam. Yeah, if you know there are not too many lesions, we can try cryotherapy because if there are extensive lesions like how it is here, cryotherapy can leave a whole lot of uh, areas on the vulva which may take a long time to heal. Now, yes, this is this is the first type of VIN. It is called LSIL vulva condyloma acuminata. now you can see if you don't treat how terrible it can look so such a giant condylometer they may require even excision 
total excision. Yes, definitely will recur. <laughs> okay. Not with medicine. Okay. What is this now, uh, Dr. Prabhavati? Uh, this is a, uh, uh, maybe it's a benign one, melanoma. It looks like melanoma, large brown to black macular uh, appearance is there, uh, of course, with, with irregular margins. So it doesn't the problem. Not melanoma. Melanosis. Doctor. Sorry, it is melanosis. It is not melanoma. Yes. Yeah, melanosis. Yes. This is melanosis. And, because uh, it doesn't progress to melanoma also. Doesn't progress. Yes, very yeah. true. So this is only a vulvar melanosis, not vulvar mel melanosis. Okay. Next, what is this, Doctor Saroja? Yes, madam. We see this very commonly in outpatients. Can you see that? It is an epidermal inclusion, inclusion system. system. Oh. Yeah, it is very common. And uh, what do you do for this? If it troubles the patient, you take it out. Otherwise, it just... If it is infected, we can do IND. Otherwise, it may rupture uh, on yes. itself. We know it may rupture. Yeah. Or if it is symptomless and she is not bothered about, we can... Uh, we need Plus, not it test the uh, inclusion cyst. Yes. If it is infected, we can go for IND. Yes, dear. Now, this next picture, which is an epidermal inclusion cyst, is one of Dr. Revati's cases. So, you can see how big it can become if you... It is actually or... following a genital mutation uh, long back. Oh. That is right. This is the thing. It's yeah. like the inclusion... So normally, we see this inclusion cyst after the episiotomy is done, isn't it? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. In the episiotomy, we see it quite often. Mm -hmm. But this is a big one after genital mutilation. Good case, Revati. Thank you. Dr. Sunita, what is this staring at you? Hemangioma, madam. Yeah, it's not a very common place, is it? Capillary. Yes, yeah. But it may. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sometimes it uh, may affect the perineal, perianal area also. Yes. Usually they, they don't lead to any complications unless uh, physical ulceration leading to bleeding. Very, very rare. Uh, is the DIC associated with these uh, huge hemangiomas? Huge Usually they regress and fibrose. Yes. Uh, what is this, Dr. Sunita? It's like hypertrophy of the labia majora yes. and minora, madam. I don't know. It's an anatomical. It was an age group, but yeah. I think just because it's a vulval abnormality, I thought I'll just put it here. Just a physiological variation. We don't need to treat it unless it causes any problems during uh, sexual intercourse or in labial hygiene, then we can. And if because it keeps on, uh, they keep uh, rubbing against each other, there can be erythema and there can be an ulceration also. So if such is yes, the case yes. that you may need to do. Uh, Lubricant lubricant creams or something like that. You'll have to do uh, no, surgical removal of the hypertrophic labia. Okay. Okay. Now, this is, yeah, this is uh, Dr. Hema. Back to you again. Um, this, uh, uh, this is a case of uh, psoriasis of the gases. Yeah. The patient may have uh, lesions inside the body also. And uh, here the lesion will not be scaly because it gets rubbed off. Uh, and uh, there is uh, yeah. no diagnostic. Everywhere, whenever you see psoriasis on the body, you see a lot of scaling. But when you find it on the vulva, you do not find any scaling. Yes. Because by rubbing, you know, all the scales go up, so you've got any really red lesions. But because you see psoriasis elsewhere on the body, then you can assume that it is psoriasis of the vulva. But the clinching thing is only a... Yes, only a biopsy. 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 Yeah. And how do you treat it? Again, steroids, uh, low-dose steroids. Uh, uh, if, it is, if it has to be used for a long period, then you can go for calcium inhibitors like uh, bimacrolimus, etc. Uh, vitamin D things and that sort can also be tried. Yeah, dear. Your voice is very faint, uh, Hema. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, I think this yeah. is the last of the series. Uh, Dr. Jivita? Yeah. This is a case is of vulval ma melanoma, madam. Yeah, see uh, how terrible it looks. Uh. Very common in the postmenopausal women. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and uh, it is either uh, it can arise as melanoma itself or some uh, nevi can also progress to melanoma. Yes. The prognosis is very bad. Very true. Now, you see the black pigment in this melanoma, but there can be 
there can be a melanotic melanoma too, like this here. So it is very important that we biopsy these areas and not just leave them and say, don't bother about it, it's a small lesion, okay? So that's the importance of showing this here. And these three are Dr. Revati's. And the first case, I think uh, such lesions we might have seen in OB, a smaller size, the fibroepithelial polyp, which is uh, with a small wow. pedicle like that. If this is such a large one, of course, sir. not a big issue that you can just go on accessing it. So, but it's so tempting to remove it, Revati. Yeah. It's tempting. <laughs> that is the thing. And this is a rare case of a myoma in the a solid tumor. See, in the vulva, you can get both solid as well as cystic tumor. Solid tumors are this uh, fibroepithelial polyp and the myoma. And uh, of course, cystic tumor Bartholins. And uh, just two days back, three days back, I got this patient, a diabetic postmenopausal for 30 years ago. She came with a complaint of mass in the vulva only. But uh, on examination, I found a small cystic lesion like this. But it was a thing, a cyst arising from the anterior vaginal wall, probably got a cyst protruding through the uh, introitus. So, so like a cyst came out with menopause. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing. Okay. So the main thing is that, as uh, she said, there is no uh, the screening method for vulva, but clinical examination of vulva is very, very, very important, important, which we never give importance at all. But just like that, undercover, even if you do a vaginal scan, you just put the probe only, not even looking at the vulva. So <laughs> examination of the vulva under good light is very, very important and examine area by area, like uh, labia, everything, this all this uh, uh, just as in the colposcope, uh, the three rings. Uh, so you examine area by area so that you can pick up, even if it is rare or less common, you can pick it up earlier and then manage them, even if they come without any symptoms. So clinical examination, I want to insist for all the practitioners, examination of the vulva. So yes, when uh, we come to this, can we prevent vulva disorders? To a yes. certain extent, yes. By increasing awareness of vulva disease, as the incidence has gone up recently, earlier it used to be 0.6%. <coughs> now it is 6%. So all of us need to be aware. Then again, lifestyle modifications, easily said than done. To avoid smoking and to indulge in safe sex. Not to use feminine hygiene products in spite of their <laughs> marketing soaps. We don't need to uh, use soap on the vulva at all. Just warm water, nothing else. No sanitizers, no deodorants, no perfumes, nothing. To use only cotton and loose underclothes. HPV vaccine should be <laughs> should advise all our patients to take it up till the age of 45. If it is non-avalent, it can prevent up to 90% of cancers. But of course, if it is taken before the age of 16 years. And to encourage self-examination of the vulva, to see, to touch and be aware of the normal fields of one's own vulva. <clears throat> what can we as gynecologists do? We should examine the vulva and the pelvis thoroughly, whatever the complaint of the patient. I see many gynecologists who do not even do a pelvic exam. Forget about seeing the vulva. So it is very important that we train our youngsters to give importance to the vulva, not just a vaginal examination and to become adept at vulvoscopy, not just colposcopy, to make a conscious attempt to understand vulva problems. All of us are guilty that when it comes to vulva lesions, we all say, oh God, it's so boring. We can never understand it. It's not very difficult. So we should make an attempt to understand vulva problems and let's start opening dedicated vulva clinics. So this is the way forward, my dear friends. And Revati, thank you very much thank for you. asking me to co-moderate with you. And I also thank want you. to you, give, uh, give credit to my friends, Dr. Sundari and Dr. Sushila, from whom I've taken a few pictures. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jyotika. Very nice. And I think the two of you should is... be given a three-day seminar. Three-day <laughs> CME to finish all the cases that you have. From where do you get them? Oh, God. No, so the one so many reading, pictures. Reading about it, you learn a lot and you get more things. Because the practically, practice, we don't see, the, no. The panelists it, and the moderators have wonderful, put in, I wonderful. think, uh, wonderful two-day CME should be given to them. Then also yeah. they won't finish. 
ਰੇਵਤੀ ਰੇਵਤੀ ਐਨ ਬੋਥ ਦਾ ਪੈਨਲ ਮੋਡਰੇਟਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਪੈਨਲਿਸਟ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਜੌਬ ਡਨ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਐਕਟਿਵ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਸੁਪਰ ਲੇਟਿਵ ਪੈਨਲ ਕੁਝ ਬੋਲਣ ਦਾ ਬਾਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਯੋਰ ਮੇਟਰਸ ਰੀਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਵਲਵਾ ਸ਼ੋਭਨਾ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਨੋ ਬਟ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਟੇਕਨ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਆਫ ਐਫਰਟ ਆਈ ਕਾਂਟ ਇਮੇਜਿਨ ਸਮਵਨ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਡੂ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਵੈਲ ਥੇਰ ਇਜ਼ ਨਥਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਅ ਹਾਫ ਜੌਬ <laughs> you have done it too good <laughs> yeah 200% <laughs> abhi you have raised the bar so much that the other societies are going to have a problem yes <laughs> yes thank you great thank you ravi ma'am thank you jeevita ma'am thank you thank you all our panelists were very thank good you. thank you ma'am excellent so congratulations to all the congratulations the part madurai congratulations thank you thank you excellent lakshmi what are thanks Sorry, yeah, ask, uh, Dr. Lakshmi, what are thanks uh, does for? anybody else want to uh, speak up um, um, on this superlative uh, panel? <laughs> anybody in the audience wants to talk about it? It was an excellent and wonderful uh, this one and it was covering all wide. Never, nothing is left. I didn't know. I'm so scared of looking at the vulva now. My so you have to look at the vulva, <laughs> Shobna. <laughs> it is really excellent but i mean never thought these these bagleshans can be in balwa yeah <laughs> archana jai is from bagalpur yeah ma'am and she was there from the beginning till the end she and i think she you really enjoyed it no bagalpur se yeah yeah madam really? it was excellent yeah. excellent madam we never thought of so many legends in balwa <laughs> anyway it is great to have that is that we have missed till now see what all you have missed till now So now you will see yeah. many more legions because you are aware. Yeah, yeah. That is the thing, yeah. That's okay. Wonderful, then. wonderful okay. congratulations to the entire team, Dr. Devithi, Dr. This thing, and the panelists. It was a revision for us. We learned a lot of things. Thank you, Hepsiba. Who is Hepsiba. this? Hepsiba. 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 Ah, Hepsiba. She's uh, hiding behind the... Yeah, you can't see your Hepsiba. Uh, I am traveling, ma'am. Okay, okay. Oh, it was okay. wonderful. Right from the beginning, it was. Yeah, uh, so I was learning. sitting glued to the screen only. Yes, I, I, I told Devati Shobna. Shobna will tell us stop, stop, stop the panel. Let us finish fast before Shobna tells us. <laughs> we are planning for the exact uh, matching time. No, <laughs> we are over short the time, but uh, clearly it is very uh, nice to us. given us enough time and i think everybody enjoyed it also so it's thank nice. you thank Madam. you very no, so much of academic discussion. content how can we miss that ma'am so much so much you have given us so we are very grateful to you to be a part of this panel madam uh, revathi thank you thank you jyotika ma'am both of them have done very wonderful excellent wonderful so much pictures and illustrations thank it you, was really very, very nice <laughs> <laughs> and then dr jyotika do something it's really it's going to be excellent <laughs> both revti and jyotika both of them are two good yeah. teachers i i have also good. cut off lesions like what she showed yeah, but, but i know. never thought of photographing it look at her she's <laughs> taken photographs and preserved it great lovely it teacher so, no, even your talk was photography. very nice thought mm-hmm. provoking Shobhana, madam, you also uh, uh, talked about uh, ischial cream. That is also very useful, madam. Mm, Shobhana, yeah, that's madam. okay, but compared to the effort they have taken, yes, this is yes. nothing. No Shobhana, I too had a few patients who were using more than three to four years of uh, Evalon cream and uh, uh, creams, you know. Uh, they uh-huh. were right. Uh, of course, they are immunocompromised and there was no other way. But one thing I can tell you, one... Uh, Uh, some few ladies know they <laughs> apply on the vagina they started applying on the <laughs> can you hear me yeah, shobhana yeah 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 they have applied instead of on the vulva they have applied on the thigh and they said they are relieved of the symptoms they i had one lady who applied it all over the body she got <laughs> she has got hot flashes so she applied no, it no, all no. over the body on the inner side of the thigh they started rubbing and uh, till uh, it is absorbed into the skin ट्रांसडर्मल ट्रांसडर्मल ना वी स्टार्ट अ न्यू वन नाउ बावती वे ऑफ अप्लाइंग इट ओके ओके नाइस टू हियर सेड ओके इफ यू आर रिलीव्
So I she know. After five years also without any intermittent involvement. Wonderful. <laughs> patients never come back. That's the problem. So yeah. we don't know who's using, who's not using ultimately. Looks Anju like and Prabhat have got patients, to, patients uh, coming back to them. No, no. ILD yeah, patients who are on the continuous over. steroids, you know, they, uh, you, they have benefited. I thought, okay, let her continue like that. Okay. Chalo then. Thank we can you. talk till 10 o'clock, but then we have to stop yes, now. Let's so make this. Behalf of Madurai Menopause Society, I thank the uh, IMS for bringing out with the IMS presidential webinar on the least discussed topic, uh, benign bulbo vaginal lesions of today. I also would like to uh, extend a thankfulness to our guest of honor, Dr. Ratna Bali Chakravarti and Dr. Seema Sharma, and our chairpersons, Dr. Anju Soni and Dr. Sumati Madam. And the speakers of today's session, Dr. Shobhana Mohandas and Dr. Vidya Pancholi, Pancholia, and uh, moderators of our panel discussion, Dr. Revati Madam and Dr. Jyotika Desai, and our vibrant panelists, Dr. Prabhavati, Dr. Sunita Prabhakaran, Dr. Saroja Veluswami, Dr. Hema Malni, Dr. Jeevita, and Dr. Narmala, for this wonderful and very informative session. I also thank our uh, digital partner, Clarinet, for uh, this uh, seamless streaming of the uh, session. Thank you all. Okay, then. Good night. Thank, and you, thank, you, you, much. thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Think of only the vulva today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Many days I'll think only of that. <laughs> okay. In dream Bye. also, you are going to see only vulva. Yeah. <laughs> Madam, we have learned a lot. I think we are going to sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye, okay, Willie. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.